Forest Park can be an unpredictable city. Affluency doesn't mitigate its problems. In some ways, it amplifies them. This is why we're deployed. But we've seen better days. Just now debriefing. This mission is not complete. I only know of her. <laughs> Our lack of data collection is a problem. Valdez, I'm aware of your investigative talents. Braxwell spoke highly of you, and that's why you're on this team. Local law enforcement handles itself very well. But there are those with abilities. Some believe themselves to be good. Others don't even attempt to act as if they are. Either way, we're involved. Not everyone will agree with our status. The pack can be said for anything. May I remind you both? We're Alpha Core. And failure is not what we do. you doing that's good i love by the way just let's get the stream demonetized immediately i love ingrid's fuck you stare to yaira when, <laughs> when brian catches her it's just such a great look it's just like fuck you bitch you know it's just all right oh i, oh, I, I love me a good super uh hero fight and there's oh, yeah. oh my god there's so many in that oh, she's so like, round two round two woman you know oh, oh okay. yeah ingrid's fearless she can't even fly but she goes head on against yaira like bringing her down here like scorpion you know come yeah. down here bitch. yeah okay. get over here yeah oh <laughs> Oh, has to quote oh, 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 have we, oh, you know, yeah. get over it, you know, I'm just saying, just saying, just, it's, just saying. It's a sexy weapon she has, mm -hmm. the green whip tendrils, those are great. I would, I would say don't take them off. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you'd be like, nah, 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 nah. no, no, <laughs> just let's see where it goes. Then ten minutes later, take him off, take him off, take him off, take him off, take him off. <laughs> safe wood, safe wood, safe wood, safe wood. <laughs> I feel like Yaira's probably gonna have to fight with Bloodruth at some point because as soon as she was introduced, everybody kind of was like, "Whoa, I love Bloodruth." And before every Yaira was like the favorite child, so now I feel like there might be beef. I, I see, I see a Yaira storyline with Bloodruth called Blood and Ice. Oh. oh that down tell the boss that's it was my good. idea he'll never find out it was you <laughs> yeah no we can no. make these things happen now we're the newest editors on the rip i know, I know but, hey, we're getting ahead of us up chat we're a little bit late because we just we were just immediately Sorry, talking chat. and then no no yeah. no I, I was just like it's gonna be good it's gonna be a good stream it's gonna be a good stream <laughs> it's a long time in the making we do good stream together i feel oh. do we is that appropriate to say we stream good? Oh no, please. The users keep saying all of that. 
forever. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry going. I wore this as my Tifa costumes in the wash. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Chat. <clears throat> sorry. I'm going through puberty. Thanks, chat. Chat. Yeah. Uh, welcome, chat. Uh, to uh, literally a geek out session. Um, we did it. We we were just talking about what we we're going to discuss. You know, let's do a stream. Let's talk about something. And we're initially just going to talk about Perfect Blue, the anime Perfect Blue, because I saw them. I uh, saw on Instagram by yourself. Yeah. Uh, so I so I thought, and I was just like, oh, I fucking love Perfect Blue. Uh, and then, really, with all that we've kind of like chatted about, uh, I just thought, no, we just need a good old fashioned geek out. Yeah. No real structure, no real sort of rules. Just just where does it go? What are our loves? What got us into them? All that kind of all that kind of stuff. But before we begin, mm. have to do some introductions, of course. And as as always, your host. And we have the Sausage Sisters here. So the, the chat may not know, because we've got Jen and Silv. Which one of oh. you is Eric July? When we go together for our twin powers activating, we actually become Eric, Eric July. July. Like wow. That's why yeah. you've never seen Eric July and us in the same room. No, we just <laughs> flip together. We're Peter Parker and Spider-Man. This is true. Huh. Nobody's ever seen me and Batman in the same room. I'm just ah. saying. You have a real Batman vibe. I, I feel you like got the eyes for sure. What does the gym think of you? Like they see you come in at all hours. <laughs> <laughs> like the power goes off. There's Wouldn't no that be hypocritical though? The man shows up at the gate being like, I need to live. <laughs> let me in. <laughs> 4 a.m. Let me in. Who is he? Why does he keep coming? What does he want? What is he preparing for? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. What is he preparing for? Yeah. You, you, you need to know. You need to know, mate. We are preparing for it. Uh, well, luckily, nobody in the gym can look at anyone in the gym when I go in at weird times in a in a sort of judgmental manner because they're there. <laughs> So that would be a bit, how dare you, Greta Thunberg? So how dare you? You know, you can't judge me. No, yeah, I see, uh, uh, at the adult theater and being like, oh, you pervert. <laughs> I, has there been, here's a question. Has there been a mainstream film that you've gone to watch at the cinema and you thought, kind of feels like I'm watching a porno? Yes. Yes, I'm I'm a big Michael Fassbender fan, um, and I went to see Shame in theaters because yeah. uh, the director Steve McQueen is the director who kind of discovered him, and they did a beautiful yeah. movie called Hunger together, where he starved himself down to like ninety three pounds playing Bobby Sands, mm -hmm. and it's like wow, what a great actor. And Shame was about a sex addict, so I was like, okay, so there's going to be some some sex stuff, some but hand handshaking. Yes, but uh, at the time, Silv and I were directing American Mary, yeah. so we had to go at the very, very latest show on a Friday night. And we weren't oh. thinking, so we just, we didn't want to sit in the back row, but we sat oh. in the row in front of it. Because we came in late, we came in straight in, we missed the previews, we're like, okay, great, Fassbender, let's see this art. And uh, God bless the people in the back row, because you know when jackets make, the, rain jackets make that swishy noise? I didn't notice there was a, a two gentlemen dressed mostly in leather and chains to my right upper corner. And you don't know when the sex was going to happen in the movie. So anytime something started, they started like the getting really busy. row would start going and then it gets sad and they'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. And no. then it would like die down and you'd hear a complaint of like, no, later. It's going to happen later. And it'd be like, whoa. And I was so <laughs> innocent and I was still in my 20s. This is so silly. I was with a male friend of mine. And I was like. Why are they all in the back row? <laughs> and also, is this a date? Oh my God, I thought we were seeing a movie. So culturally, mm. culturally I learned that yeah. if you go to a theater like that, the back row is traditionally for dates. And late is night it, is for is no people to see you come and leave. <laughs> what a rhythmic, what a rhythmic noise. <laughs> what's, what's that sound? What is there a drip? Is there, is there a leak in here? Like, oh. <laughs> and then a few minutes later, you're like, <sniffs> oh. No. Well, I think oh. they were bummed out that we sat there because they're like, why are they sitting in front of us? We're trying to jerk off in the theater. 
I'm sure you mind people... watching this film? I tried to masturbate here. <laughs> what are these people doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Don't turn around. Just don't turn around. I did turn around and I got a glare. And then I was like, because I at first didn't know. And then my friend was like, anyway. Yeah, what's then... your friend like? Mm. <laughs> when, in <Rome? laughs> when in Rome? We... Well, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oddly, I found it a very unwankable film because yeah. it's very sad. At the beginning, you see Fassbender like full naked and there's a lot to discuss there, but uh, <laughs> the film kind of just goes downhill from there, like sexually, because you think, oh, it's going to be great. He's going to be pounding chicks. And then it's just very sad. Yeah. He can't help it. He can't connect to anybody. It's ruining his life. And I'm like, well, it is wankable still but it's a bit of a more difficult wank if people dying from addiction is hot to you woo, buckle up oh yeah and <laughs> suicide mm. yeah <laughs> so that welcome one welcome to the show <laughs> <laughs> welcome to show you guys happy monday morning oh my god did i just demonetize you i'm sorry <laughs> oh no don't worry about that <laughs> there's no there's no uh remote um notion that this will ever get monetized this stream oh, nice. so don't, don't fret don't fret about that yeah okay. but you have fought the power for your demonetization two weeks in a I, row, I, would, I, oh, I will absolutely fight it just for shits and giggles because sometimes i say the worst things on stream then i get demonetized then i'm like fuck this i'm gonna fight it i fight it and someone goes like yeah it's fine wow <laughs> and then i'm just like, <laughs> like i had a dark soul stream couple of nights ago i was losing my shit uh, i was losing my shit i was going through the i went through this hideous two or three hour spell it's like an eight hour stream and i was i was fucking losing it i was getting ratty with me ratty with the stream Hats <laughs> were fucking smacked desks were getting fucking smacked everything. i was saying on left right and center like it was going out of fashion so unsurprisingly the stream is demonetized unsurprisingly <laughs> And I'm like, fuck it. And I just go and challenge it and it just gets fucking remonetized. I'm like, <laughs> that's literally against the terms. Of <laughs> that sounds like a good stream. I missed that one. I've been loyally watching oh. your Dark Souls. That game, I mean, I love it, but yeah. it sucks. Like, you don't play it for fun. <laughs> yeah. I No, I was like, I've been doing okay. Yeah. Okay ish. And then that night, everything that could did go wrong but last night i did i did a, a sunday fun day on my own stream because they're in la comic-con and qpg had some work to do and i fucking nailed it last night i killed like four bosses last night i was on a fucking <gasps> roll so, nicely done i live vicariously through it like i'm helping like if i'm in the chat <laughs> and you do something i'm like yes we did it i was doing Just... hurt though it yeah, helps. I'll do hard. So I'll be like, "Yeah, we did it." But it had the it had the perfect ending because I, I I I was literally ending in a couple of minutes. I said, "Right, we're going to end on the hour," and I got to a boss, and it was like eight minutes before the end of the stream. So I said, "All right, chat. What I'll do? Spend my souls, and then just just buy some arrows. What I get rid of all the souls. Come back. We'll have a look at the boss. See what it's like, and then we'll next stream. Hopefully, do some progression with that." I go in there, fucking one shot the bitch. Hot. One shotted the bitch, knocked it the fuck out. You're such a provider, Av. You're so strong. Mm. I know. Now, not for free. <laughs> <laughs> not for free. No, no, <laughs> no. It got the it got they got the compression top plus the slightly tighter t-shirt. Can't do it for free. <laughs> Sorry, chat's your way. So yeah, it's just like the perfect end to a stream because I've got a busy week. Probably won't get back to Dark Souls till Thursday. So, yeah, I was like, ha ha. But uh, you guys, you got some, you got a whole load of shit going on right now. Because if you don't know, chat, a uh, pair of them horror directors. Uh, so you have all the film stuff. You did movies for uh, the WWE studios. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. 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 No. 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 We got an email for that. That's gonna be Kane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of it. <laughs> and now, and then you did uh, No Strengths Play. 
which yeah. was your uh, five-part uh, Black Widow story. Which get the files, get them. Well, yeah. get, <laughs> literally cut them up. Yeah, it Yay. was very cathartic to watch. Yay! It was we the feel like... story of the year. We really had to beg and plead for that dismemberment at the end, but yeah. we got in. I was like, we already did it to a child. We've got to do it to this guy. It was like demonetizing your stream. We're like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, but it was like it's like reading a it's like reading a nineties comic again. It was great. Oh, uh, thank and you. that's uh, the highest compliment. I have to check. It's like two thousand nineteen Marvel. <laughs> what? It's like this ain't right. This doesn't feel right. Oh, I mean, it was crazy. Like I remember we were in a store and we got a call from Marvel and they're like, and to work with one of the characters, they have to have a free time in their schedule. And they're like, Black Widow has some free time, and we're like, oh. <gasps> Do you guys want to try doing a Marvel Max for her? Because the movies made her so soft, but you guys kind of specialize in like bad, dangerous women. Would you want to do that? And we're like, oh, yeah. And we're like, who can she murder that no one would care about? And we're like, hmm. Politicians. Oh. Ah! Same difference. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we we did the pitch, and then they said no, and we we're like, okay, well, we we thought so, and then we got a, a phone call like a year later, and they're like, it's happening, but there's a change, and we're like, oh, they're probably not gonna let us do the pedophile thing, and then they're like, yeah. she's dead, so she's a clone, and we're like, all right, sick, unsatisfying <laughs> to learn, but okay, that's fine. That kind of takes huh? away all her uh, accomplishments because she could have died any time, and another natasha clone came back but that's okay that's a another horrible choice to do to a beloved character yeah uh, yeah clones just uh. but they've been so successful in the past as a spider-man <laughs> fan i like to defend the clones i understand we got too many clones in the 90s but i bet we would kill for those clones nowadays just right if just we just had ben riley like just one clone yeah that was good <laughs> i'll that's just, I'll just kill for them the... right away sorry I just want the OG character. Just give me the OG character, you know. Yeah, it'd be nice, it'd be nice to do some stories based based on how they actually act, you know, and not have babies out your ass like Mystique. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, you know, when Dan Slott murdered Spider Man horribly. That's when I really felt the the WrestleMania thirty thing started happening with Marvel. Instead of doing something that everyone wants to see, like you could just look, go on the message boards and see usually pretty common things that the fans want to see. And you could do that. You could easily do that. But instead, they're like, let's make everyone angry. Who does everyone mm. love? Oh, Peter. Let's kill him and have one of his villains in his body and then have him like screw Mary Jane. She has no idea. But He's just dumb, right? Then Miguel O'Hara sees him, who's from another timeline, who's as far as I know, never had sex with Peter. With the mask on, <laughs> knows that he's not Peter Parker in one exchange. Oh my God, written by a guy who's obviously not married and never been in a relationship with be. a woman. Not, not, hey. not the greatest tell if you're married. She was like, my wife would never tell if there's another man inside my body. But that was Phrasing. just to piss people <laughs> off. I remember being like, oh, Seth, issue 700. What are they going to do? How exciting. Oh. I was singing to the comic book store and then I looked online and was like, oh, all of us are very upset. Mm. There's a whole thing to unpack with that, Dan. <laughs> Did you see he badmouthed Mary Jane? I I don't know. I have a lot of sympathy for Mary Jane just because I was like, that was such a win for Peter, right? Like he was this great guy and you're like, he never wins except he married a supermodel who didn't even like him at first. And then she mm. was like, oh, I have to grow up and be a mature person, which was like, whoa, not just being pretty. She had to build herself as a person. And she was like the shittiest actress. I loved that too because she was just hot. I was like, oh. Yeah, anyway, great Mary Jane is great when it's written like that. Mm. I just sorry, but I just love the idea of uh, of somebody being inside Peter's body and the first thing he wants to do is fuck his missus. <laughs> she is fun. She yeah. is fun. It's Isn't that like, creepy? Like what, what what would you do if you're Batman as your Batman? Okay. What's the first thing you're gonna do? Where where are you gonna patrol the streets? Are you gonna get the gadgets out? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking come on Catwoman's tits. <laughs> 
even Axel Braun would never write that. He'd be yeah. like, this is, where's the story? Where's yeah. the excitement? Why are they doing it? It's got, that had, that has more story than anything for the mainstream comics in the last dozen years, by the way. Yeah, that. 100%. Oh, yeah. But that, I, mean, but that, I mean, you know, that's the sort of thing you would kind of do. Everyone has this bullshit notion of heroicism and stuff like that. It's just like, no, nah, you'd just be like, hey, hey, Selena, hi, hi, it's Bruce. Hey. <laughs> Um, taking the night off. I know I never do, right? But uh, I don't know. It's my birthday or something. I guess. I mean, well, that's kind of ambiguous when it is. So why not today? <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna hook up? That's what I. You know, come on. Let's just get real. So yeah, I think I think that's the, probably the only thing that Dan Slot's ever done that's uh, any any logic, shall we say, behind it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also something that Dan Slot would never understand because he's never done it. But never mind, Dan. One day, one day, your uh, princess will definitely, <laughs> definitely not come. Man, it's Just hard because those characters are so sacred. Like, I remember being a little kid and going to my local comic book store and being like, I like Storm. And all these like adults came over to me and they're like, you like storm here. And I was like, Whoa. And they're, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And they're, they're like giving me gifts. They're like, this is the one action figure. Sometimes they repaint it. So it looks like a different one. I'm like sick. Yeah. I'll buy both. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you do though. That is what, that is what comic book stores to me always, always was when I, when I first started getting into comics, yeah. um, you know, I just when it's at this little market store that I went to just a guy the market stand it was just like is it the size of this sort of big cubicle that i'm in just covered in comics modern you know the, the latest releases and i was like i'm into i'm i i would like to know about the batman please <laughs> so, so it'd be like well there's there's batman and there's detective comics i was like right and they said and they've now got shadow of the bat and legends of the dark knight which is which has come out and then okay Okay, they're ongoing, right? I'll take, I'll take them. And then, do you know about miniseries? <laughs> what a miniseries, right? Miniseries are, and then it'd be like you know, one shots. <sighs> oh, uh, do you know about Elseworlds? <laughs> you know, so so it happens that way. And then when you go into Forbidden, you know, I was in Forbidden Planet because I wanted the back issues. This guy didn't do back issues or a very limited amount because he had a tiny store. So I'd go, into, I'd go to him first because I always made sure he got my money first. Mm. And then whatever money I had left, then I would go down to the Forbidden Planet and then I would get the back issues. And you'd go in there and you just have to ask one question. That's it. You're set. What yeah. I would like to, to know where your Batman back issues are. You leave knowing everything. You know, <laughs> the layout of the shop, what the guy's name is, how old he is, what degree he's got. Uh, also, what his mom, David's doing in his spare time, and his mother also works at the bingo hall. On top of that, you're suddenly an officiato about fucking Alfred, never mind Bruce, and you know everything. You're walking out the store, yeah, it's like something of a Batman expert myself, you know. <laughs> And that's a universal language. Like you can go mm -hmm. anywhere and start talking Batman, and then everybody else who knows those stories will gravitate, and now you have something in common. And I always thought that was cool like i always like dropping spider-man too and if anybody's like ears perk up and they're like spider-man and that's the best one i'm like now we're best friends we can talk about this for the rest of our lives mm. yeah they want conversation you know you, you come back in it's like hey hey how you doing i'm all right and then you start so what's going on with nightfall then well i can't believe that they did you know did it well you know we know what's coming because when i <laughs> When I first started collecting comics, I literally went to my local news agent. I was in my local news agent, probably buying some sweets or something. And I just noticed they had a spinner rack in the in the corner, tiny shop, but that spinner rack, and they had Batman and Detective Comics on it. So I was sort of like interested after seeing the Burton movie. So I so I picked them up. But this, that was a news agent. So they had the newsstand version, which was if it was March, you had the March issue. So when I actually decided to go into Leeds and, and go to a, a comic book store. I was just like, wait a minute. You've got like, like that's what I said. Exactly what I said. <laughs> Sorry, it's her raw Diana, hard. He's very Princess passionate Diana. about I, back issues. I, I, I know. <laughs> you know, talk to me about feminism or something, teacher. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd, I'd go there and be like, there'd be two months ahead. 
because you they they you know label them a couple of months ahead. So I was just like, <gasps> I could get two months ahead now. I was just like, this is this is some really good shit. When did what what got you into comics? Our grandmother, actually, our grandmother would come and babysit us and we would always go for a little walk and there was a corner store and it was, again, just a newsstand store where it was like candy and pop, like a 7-Eleven type thing. Yeah. But they had a little section for comic books and they had Marvel and DC. And I remember ripping them all open, not ripping, but pulling them all open and looking for all the characters yeah. and looking to see which characters seemed the coolest. And I saw Rogue. And I thought mm. she was hot. Yeah. I, I I didn't know. I read it in her accent too. And I thought that was cool. I thought she yeah. was, even though she was a Southern and, you know, you'd think that traditionally that implies lower class. I was like, oh, well, she's this Southern belle. Like yeah. she's quite mm. a lady. And then I learned about her little struggle there already. Like she couldn't touch, I, immediately she was so hot and she couldn't touch people. And that made me think, whoa, what? Like you can write that for a thousand years that really made me think like this character is so cool i have to learn everything about her yeah we were so lucky it was the chris claremont run and yeah. i i remember mm. my first comic book it was the one where storm broke up the morlock wedding with kitty and she's just there on the cover shooting lightning and she has the mohawk and i remember looking at all the comic books and that one had so many chicks on it except for like caliban and was like what is this and i want to be the <laughs> mohawk lady she's my favorite and Storm is such a good role model. And she was like being a like surrogate mother to Kitty. She was just taking over the team. She was tra talking about dressing sexy, but sexy for you, not just being too hard for like going too hard for other <laughs> sure, teams. And I was sure, like, yeah. well, I, everything. Big shit there. <laughs> oh my God. It was, it was written so ahead of its time. And now when people say, oh, this is for kids, do you think? I didn't have internet and I could pick up a comic book, read it, and my brain would expand to that reading level. Now the kind of stuff that they write for kids, it's like they have a learning disability yeah. or if they have yes. like literally part of their brain missing because it's like you're you're infantizing children through your writing yes. and, you're yeah. and you're turning off anybody with a brain. Like the fact that Wolverine in one comic book took uh, Colossus out to a bar, started a fight with Juggernaut, and let him get his ass handed to him because he's like, I don't like what you did to Kitty. Yeah. You bailed on her, so I bailed on you. And I was like, whoa. Wow. Yeah. And it was amazing shit. Do you know who Wolverine is right now? Oh, X-23. <laughs> no, what I feel is like oh. when Electra became Daredevil, I was like, he doesn't want that. She doesn't want that. I don't want that. Nobody wants it. But it feels like after like a 90s, we were peak everything. Like chicks could kick ass. It was totally fun. They could be sexy, too. And then after Me Too, everyone was like, how do you treat women? What is a woman after all? Maybe we should, maybe we should look at this. So we can't look at the boobs anymore and everyone else is a pervert and a sexist and girl everything girl spider-man girl deadpool do you think that, that make the women happy girl that's deadpool. all the people who are who are just involved in the me too bubble so you have everyone in the me too bubble acting accordingly to their me too bubble meanwhile every normal person outside of it who sees exactly what you're doing uh you know with the whole me too and the whole um uh, self deletion of her husband due to the fact that she was fucking underage boys. You know, it's because it's all, it's all, everything's projection nowadays. Oh, it's insane. It's people are, people Is it are Argenta? so gross. Is it like, Major Argenta? I, know, I know after, uh, yeah, after Me Too happened, there are so many women that had ironclad uh, prenups with their famous others. And they decided to just do whatever to put their dirty laundry in the press. Because if you have a prenup, it is ironclad unless slander starts happening. And to get that slander to stop mm. happening during a divorce, you have to renegotiate so you do payments for the rest of your life. No one's allowed to talk about that, though. Like, some girl shows up and says, I want to marry you. Marries them, says, let's, ha let's, let's live this funky life. Let's do whatever. And then they're like... You pet, you disgusting pervert. How dare yes. you? Oh, when I was right. having those orgies with you, I never wanted that. And now you better pay me five million dollars a year because <laughs> I am so offended. I did everything mm. in my horror magic to trap you, and now I just want your money. A lot of these people also have relationships with the spouse that they slandered. 
and they're working on the relationship, but not publicly. Like they're not going to say, "Hey, I kind of, I kind of fucked up too." I ruined his life for no reason. Yeah, but I'm stoked that I'm getting like ten grand a month to just to exist. Or in that mm. case, usually it's like a hundred grand a month just to exist because I'm used to a lifestyle. Oh, hundred exactly. grand a month for a uh, child benefit. What the fuck is that child doing with that hundred grand? That's selling cocaine, I hope. A kid better be <laughs> making bank. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. Yeah. So that, that, that kid is eating good. That kid's eating steak <laughs> yeah. 24 hour a day, you know, when it's wrapped up in the silk diapers or whatever. But instead of baby food, just caviar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby's got to blow through this or dad yeah, can yeah. adjust the amount. I say, wah wah and all that, you know. <laughs> I, I said, if if I if I if I when we get married, ladies, of course, when we all get married, uh, there will be a prenup. Yeah, yeah, oh, damn there will right. Be a, there, there will be a prenup. My prenup will be you. If we divorce, you ain't getting my shit. You ain't getting my fucking toys, right? You can have my money. You can have my house. You can have the car. You can have the dog. No, you can't have the dog. Uh, I don't have one. That's why. Why you would you have that? Cat, I don't even know. And I wouldn't want to take her. No, you're not going to take Val. But no. you ain't having my. Hot, no, Lego, hot toys. I would never. Mm. I always thought a prenup is amazing because if you love the person so much, you're never getting divorced, right? Because it yeah, says yeah, in sure. the fucking marriage vows that your yeah. good, bad, sickness, health, all of that shit. It's not till, hey, I got bored and I decided you have a lot of stuff that like I didn't earn, but I would like since I've been living next to and around it. Oh, I mean, uh, the amount of people that get married into a situation did not come from that situation, but are like, I like jet skiing now. So like, <laughs> if I didn't jet ski any month with my own jet ski, I'd feel like my life wasn't as good. Yeah, yeah, but I don't do winters and non-tropical. It's not good for my complexion. Like, I don't no. do that anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever see Marriage Story as? No. Oh, it's such a great movie about divorce with Scarlett Johansson, Black Widow, woo. Oh, and Adam uh, Driver. Adam Driver, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's you know it's so funny because it's so innocent, and then the lawyers get involved and it gets so disgusting. Yes. And I hope you never have to deal with lawyers because we own our own company. We've dealt with lots of them. I love my lawyers, by the way. Hi guys. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it gets mean spirited just for the sake of it. Like if you were in a divorce, they would go for your toys right away because they'd be like, "How can I make as upset and yes. hurt him as a human being?" Mm. Oh, he said he loves his action figures. Well, she's going to need all of them, right? I'm going to burn the house down. <laughs> With her in it, do it like Eminem and Rihanna in that video. It's so sexy. <laughs> I will be I will be here on the chair just like this. <laughs> Street, streaming it live as everything just burns around me. I'm a I'm fucking Tibetan monk, up. bitch. I'm a Tibetan <laughs> monk. I've always, unfortunately, I never j chose to justify <laughs> on my looks. Life would have been so much easier. Yeah. I, I had this career and this job, so I can, af if I want a thing, I can afford to buy it myself. Yeah. And I don't, I could never imagine getting married to someone, then it not working out and being like, okay, well, I really like this mansion. I really like those cars. I really like uh, the place mm. you have in Japan. And it's like, but I didn't earn it. Like, how could you go to sleep in a place and be like, Ah, uh, I'm so happy in the place that I stole from my ex. <laughs> so great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, I, well, I can't understand because you've got to be a certain kind of person to, to do that sort of shit. But if you're superficial, you understand that people are going to be superficial. Yeah. But if you're, if you're connected with somebody, then, then gifts are wonderful. Particularly though, if the gift means something. You know, yeah. it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that that gift has to have a high price tag. It could be that you were you were in a, a in a shop, and uh, maybe she saw just this little angel figure on the on the shelf. She's like, "Oh, that's lovely," and then you moved off, and you went and did something, and then she's having a bad day, and you just put the little angel figure down, Aww. and she's just like, oh. "As see, that's why you're gonna be a good husband." Mm -hmm. um, I, I, You'll never get divorced. You're gonna be fine. Yeah. Those blue eyes and that the way you talk. Pfft. It's You'll true. be fine. You'll be fine. I've paid them a lot of money. Jen. <laughs>
we went to, that's why we were late we weren't talking we were just going through what they would say at certain points i was making sure the wire transfer went through and i was like okay we're good yeah to yeah yeah that's it i was like can we go now has it we haven't seen it in the bank um, yet <laughs> not in the bank yet three minutes past seven yeah right it's in it's in okay I'll, it's can I hit go? Yeah. that's what she said if i had it i need to get that i need to get that on the board just wiped, wiped it all off. Totally paid. Totally scripted. A hundred percent. But you know what I really I like when we first started talking? Oh, where is it? Oh, so it's got show and tell. I, got, I brought some stuff for show and tell. Ooh, okay. <gasps> this yeah, boy. One of the first Hold on, let's... I ever bought. I took such good care yes. of it. We started at four, actually, and then we went Ooh. three, two, one. It's still... Oh, lovely, lovely. Spoilers, guys. The book's even still okay. I know the corner. I didn't know I was it's a okay. child. I didn't it's know okay. to save it. Kids to adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember when you got instruction yeah. books and they gave you like, oh, oh, here's the map. Do I? Oh, right? Oh, hey. my God. I don't know if you, chat, I can't see you, but if you loved this game, I love you and we can be best friends forever. The song when Rune shows up. Oh, Rika. You got a healer. She was a healer, but she could also fight, which was like very rare. This is Rune. They did that. You're, you're making stuff now. Okay. Oh, I mean, that sounded a bit weird, but take it for what you like. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would get excited because, like, we like toys the same amount. Oh yeah, I mean, hey, you you showed me a, a, a Genesis. I'll show you Mega Drive because in the UK oh. it was called <laughs> Mega Drive, not Nem you know, not Genesis. Now, the Fantasy Star 4 one, I don't have here. Packed. There's some Fantasy Star stuff packed away. Uh, but it, ours is blue. Ours has Mega Drive on it, and that red that you have, that's actually blue. Because that's what the, the, uh, the PAL version tended to be. But I do have this uh, Mega Drive game to hand, which, uh, which was an absolute doozy. Oh, oh, my God. Chat, uh, if you don't know that, you could make your own guys and you could roll them. You could get a bunch of different guys. I would roll forever to get good stats. That is, oh, yeah. Things are randomized in there, even though the graphics are <sighs> the graphics. I love it more than like 90% oh, of shit yeah. that comes out. I've got oh, no problem. Nice I, I, I'm going to fire this back up one day. No, oh. no doubt. But I mean, also, is this just one of the greatest covers to a video game that you've ever seen? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I just saw this when I, I remember going into the, the video game store to rent it. Yeah. And I was just looking, I'm looking at Mega Drive games to rent. I'm a little kid. I don't have money to buy. These were £45 back that then. That's expensive. That was, I mean, nowadays that's like a hundred plus quid. I couldn't afford that. But if I had a couple of quid, I could rent it for three nights from the video game store. So I'd be there, just be like looking, big fantasy fan. I saw that cover and I was just like, <laughs> it's beautiful the covers used to be so much more gorgeous yeah. you know mm. and then when you're looking at like the playstation store the little covers they make are just so shitty even if it's a good game it's like oh god yeah if it's made by the same company sometimes i'm like it's just the same thing again i'm gonna show you another one and okay. i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you this for a specific reason okay now this specific reason is you the pair of you because i would love to see your film, legit. Having having read No Strengths Play, having seen where you've come from with your, your horror background, directing background, I would love to see a film or a series, don't care, from you guys about this franchise. Okay? Okay, I'm okay. excited. I wonder if it's one of our favorites. Parasite Eve. Oh! <laughs> Parasite Eve, obsessed. Ob she said my mitochondria was different. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, you guys, if you've never played Parasite Eve, Parasite Eve 2, and then the birthday one that I think uh, is this is the birthday one. This is third birthday. Oh, oh this is the PSP. PSP yes. third birthday. They, you know, twist. Oh, look. Wow. Twisted, Twisted edition. edition. Oh, it's, it's fate. It's fate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man! So there's a movie. Oh, I love it. There's a foreign film that was the that yes. I think they based the game off of, and I think it's based on a novel. But I would be obsessed. Our uh, our remake of Cronenberg's Rabbit had a lot of transhumanism themes that we actually stole from uh, 
from Parasite Eve because it's one of our favorite games. It would be so beautiful. That scene right in the opera with the fire and everyone running out. Oh my gosh. And the music. Ah, ah, you have great taste. I love Parasite Eve. Now, oh my gosh. I've actually, uh, I. Uh, Inadvertently bought two of these. This is the UK version. I'll send you one because I've actually, really? um, <gasps> yeah, yeah, because I got I got another one right next to it there. Oh, so uh, I, and I, you, I, you know, I'm a you. dweeb, so I put everything in these, uh, you know, cases, these plastic uh, cases as well. Wow, that's beautiful. But yeah, they never came out in the West. Parasite Eve one never came out in the never came out in the in the Europe anyway. I think maybe America, um, but never came out in Europe. So this is the only one that I can have, which is the Japanese version. Oh, it's and then Parasite so Eve 2 did come out. Oh my and this was God. wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So the, I'll, send you the, I'll send you the other one. The body horror for the villains because they're humanoid was so disturbing to me. I just loved it. Oh, the baby thing that was born at the end that had the dick tail <sighs> and it kept changing and it kept crying. It was Yeah, it was very Giger-esque. Giger is the guy, for you guys who don't know, is the gentleman who designed most of the stuff for Alien. And if mm -hmm. it looks like human anatomy, yeah, because it's supposed to. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a lot of phallic imagery with uh, oh, yeah. Giger. And I don't, did you ever see his um, Batman Forever stuff? No. Oh, oh they were going yeah. really gay with he, Batman he Forever, was, eh? He, he was, was approached, yeah. Him. They approached him and they said, uh, can you design the Batmobile and all this kind of stuff? And uh, so it's it's all out there on the internet. Uh, and then they were sort of like, oh, we, we, we're going to go Joel Schoenberger instead. <laughs> and very completely <laughs> gay. But, but <laughs> that's so great like that reminds me of uh clive barker as well because almost all of his art starts with a, a part of the male anatomy and then he turns that into a person guess which part <laughs> <laughs> and at one point god bless disney disney hired him to adapt one of his things that uh, Abra, <laughs> it's like his version of um alice, alice in wonderland, wonderland. but on mm. acid and it still has really disturbing imagery. And if you look at the paintings, a lot of them started as a dick and then turned into a different character. And I, I can imagine Disney not paying attention, not paying attention. Then at one point they're like, this is great. We put millions into it. Wait a minute. This is a dick. Is this? Hmm. We usually put these in later. Why is this yeah. already here? This is no, this is not how we do things at Disney. <laughs> I don't know. I think <laughs> <it's so laughs> <there>. Maybe. <laughs> Not <laughs> enough dicks in this now. You know what? Not enough dicks. We thought Not you were enough this. Yeah. Twenty more. Get out of here. Out of here. We want, we want fifty dicks in this one. This Better is for numbers. kids. This is Disney. <laughs> hey, just a little, 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 little bit of uh, dirt for you here. Let's just go quickly. Bang. And it's oh, just our That's the I Japanese know. one. I grabbed this one for you. Did you have Nintendo? Oh, I love the Batman. Oh, my goodness. I loved Batman Returns particularly. Based off the movie. Oh, Batman oh, Returns is yeah. just as hard. Ooh, too. That was the one. Gentleman. And then, of course, the uh, Fantasy Star. Oh, my God. God. I really love Fantasy Star. It was our first RPG and it really got us into it. And it's so funny. Dungeons and Dragons was our second one. So, like, is there a cat oh. in the house? Um, <laughs> would you be okay if there was? If uh, you split it, I'll be more exciting. Oh, yeah, okay, let's just okay, let's sure. do a revenue share. <laughs> <laughs> it's more for personal use at the moment. Um, <laughs> but yeah, because I you started with Fantasy Star 4. Yeah. I actually started with Fantasy Star 3, Generations oh. of Doom. Then I went great. back to Fantasy Star 2. Yeah. And then you notice that there is the con uh, the constant with Ren and, and me. Yeah. And then, uh, then I eventually, because it was on a completely different console, managed to get a master system for the original Fantasy Star. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's... But I think that was my first major... RPG as well was Fantasy Star 3. And then that got me into Shining Force and oh. all that sort of stuff, you know? Chat, did you guys play Shining Force, the greatest game ever? 
And then out of nowhere, someone would join the force and the happy little music would start. Oh. Oh. I love when they joined the force. The Phoenix was so good. You and you just get... kill everything. I was like, thank yeah. God. And you'd upgrade mm. them and then you get a little special item to make them super powered. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was so good. Get them to level 10, is it? Get them to level 10, convert yeah. them. Then they transform. And then you <laughs> yeah, have to yeah, get yeah. a special item for your chick friend because either she'd be a monk or she'd be super hot. And if you gave her the thing, she was like a super hot monk. Yeah, she either looked like the Pope or a hottie. So you had to find like, I guess the ball of something. No kink shaming if you think the Pope is hot. That's fine. That's just not oh, my style. After seeing um, Goblin Slayer, I'm okay with women looking like priests, you know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if they dress the way that she's blind, but you know, that's that's probably half the fun. That's just plenty of blind folk. It's a good aesthetic. I don't know why. It's just, I don't mm. know. Mm, very but no I'm, I'm okay i'm okay with that so, <laughs> so, so that is that when you when you because you play a little bit of game but not a huge amount of game or a little or more retro than than current we play uh let's see we're actually always in the middle of a game we're kind of trophy whores on playstation <laughs> I, I i i like to get those platinums i have uh okay oh okay. yeah okay. So, yeah, yeah. I, um, there's some games that I'm insane over that I can't, now that I have like the trophy option, the Metal Gears, I'm a big, big Metal Gear woman. Yeah. And uh, I would be demonetized because I say some very mean things to Snake and Mr. Kojima. I'm so sorry. I usually love both of you. He but... didn't program the game so you would die. I don't, it's not even a real diss. Like in the heat <laughs> of the moment, I always start playing on extreme as well because yeah. when you need it on Tell extreme, me. I want to know. Is easier. But vamp tranquilizing him on extreme, that sucked ass. But, and not in the fun way <laughs> you're into it. But when mm. you went, met Phil Lamar, he did the vamp voice for you. Oh we yeah. Met, we met him at LA Comic Con actually, where where Gary and X-ray girl and Kara are right now doing their their beautiful stuff. Yes, Phil Lamar is a wonderful actor uh that you might have seen on Mad TV, but he's also the voice of Vamp. And uh, he's one of those stars that's really gracious that'll introduce who he is, even though you obviously know who he is. And I was like, I know you. Yeah, we were all <laughs> hanging out because after you're done, it's like you're on your best behavior, like zoo animals. And then you go out to the, the parking lot. And you're like, whoa, I hope I smiled enough. I hope I didn't ruin anyone's life after they met me <laughs> for my awkwardness. And he was talking and I was like, Phil, would you go up behind Jen and whisper it and say something to her? And she's oh. such a fan of them. <sighs> Man, he's a good guy. He did it. He called me queen and said some other things that might demonetize your stream. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy with that fan Bass. experience. Critical base theory. That's what's going oh, on right now. I love your shirt. That's beautiful. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I don't. We won't go there. Well, let's 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 bring it up. Uh, Sniper Wolf's death in in Metal Gear. I loved. I absolutely love that. And the music. Because, uh, I, I have that soundtrack memorized. I love it so mm. much. I used to, like, I recorded all of Metal Gear 1 and I used to fall asleep listening to it play out in my head so I could go to sleep and be even more obsessed with it. I love that there's no option that she lived. I love that old yeah. guy yeah, yeah, yeah. had yeah. to die. And at the end, it wasn't like Snake's like, hey, fuck you. But yeah. he's all kind of like smoking a cigarette, like, fuck my life. It's all death. I'll be dead soon. Yeah. And I love that Otacon was so out of his element, especially in the first one. Yeah. And it was nice to see. Uh, and I'm sure he pissed Mr. himself in the first one. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> he does. <laughs> oh, the ninja. The ninja's scary. If it's oh, like the ninja was ninja phenomenal, ninja. man. The ninja's sexy. He dirty talks to Snake the entire time. But Make that... me feel again, right? Oh, I mm. felt that Snake. Uh, <laughs> I, I I I love Kojima. Okay, so uh, but before we go next, I gotta I just gotta address this because uh, Robert just dropped three hundred dollars. And says your choice towards a Batman figurine or Cassid as Merry Christmas, Robert. Merry Christmas, Robert. Thank Robert, you. that's uh, Merry Christmas coffee to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna message you on on Twitter, Robert, later. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do because you've given me an idea about what to do with that. And I'm going to tell you. Ooh. I'm not going to tell you. We I'm going to tell him. Too, as. as is going to update the surveillance in our apartment. He's like, 
<laughs> we're gonna get a camera for all the rooms now. Yes. Okay. Because great. like, okay, here's the big Metal Gear theory. Quiet mm. is quiet. Silent uh, is quiet. Sniper Wolf. I don't think so. What I really, really, I really hoped that she would be, yeah. and I was kind of hoping that Phantom ba Pain was going to be like the Outer Heaven Zanzibar story yeah. about when Big Boss got all of uh, Greyhound or, or yeah. uh, Foxhound together. Foxhound and because yeah, yeah. uh, <laughs> when Sniper Wolf talked about Saladin and this beautiful story, and he took me away from all that pain, and then she watched it through the scope of her rifle. Oh, I wanted to see that. Yeah, that's, that. that's great. That's that yeah, was yeah. hot. I wanted, and it was a non-sexual relationship. It was kind of, and she's such a sexual, like, yeah, spy she's chick. Hot. It yeah. was nice to have her have a guy that sees value in her and teaches her how she can be part of war but not in war. I thought that was amazing. I just, I, and she needs to speak, right? Yeah, she because this <laughs> quiet could only speak so many words before she lost. Because she was infected. Yeah, that's yeah. Which thing? But I, as a Hungarian, it is true the language that you speak that those are your people. And uh, in World War II, they passed something called the Magyar Act, where you it was illegal to speak Hungarian outside of Hungary. It's true. And that bad bad guy in Metal Gear. In case y'all haven't played a thousand hours of Metal Gear, kids with Hungarian, <laughs> you should. He, he created a, something that made you lose your ability to speak the more you spoke because he's Hungarian. He's like, fuck you other languages. Which is a testament to how good those guys are that write those games because that's the one language in the whole world that it was illegal to speak because of the power of the Austro-Hungarian Empire before World War One. Like, that and all who the, does that? That and all the forgotten languages we don't know anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> English is becoming one of those as well. But, uh, yeah. Don't worry well, about that. English is interpretive these days. Well, as are you bilingual? Uh, uh no. No, parlez-vous français petit peu? Un petit peu de français, oui. Oh, but about Nandayo, Nandayo! I learned Nandayo, Nandayo from you, Nandayo. 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 That's that's from watching uh, Battle Royale a million times. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just goes Nam <laughs> That's a fun family friend. Oh, I saw that. That um, the beauty about Battle Royale for us in the UK is because it was part funded by a UK TV channel called Channel Four. Wow. So they they part funded it. So it never came out in cinemas over here. It came out on Channel Four TV. Uh, so I we actually saw Battle Royale in, I think it was 2000, 2001, the same year that it came out uh, wow. in the cinemas in Japan. And I just remember one night uh, just turning on the TV. It was late. And uh, it was literally at the bit where uh, it's the psycho. Oh, man, it's not chicks. It's the other, the, the psycho woman um, who was going around murdering all the, you know, honey potting all the boys and uh, and whatnot. <laughs> It was just at her moment when she's getting killed by um, number four, which was the, uh, you know, the psycho kid. So you have the psycho woman versus the psycho kid. And it was just there. And I just saw that bit of it. And that's relatively towards the end. Yeah. And I was just like, what the <laughs> Sorry. Hold on. That's all right. Mom, I'm streaming. Hi, Mom. I'm, I'm live. I'm streaming, sweetie. Okay, I will I will I will call you tomorrow, okay? Love you. Bye bye. Love. We love you, mom. Bye. You're a good boy answering for your mom. Yeah, mama as Mama Mama as there. Yeah, I just saw that and I was just like, I what is this film? What is this film? I gotta see this film. And then I um I managed to 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 see it a couple of years later, all of it, the, the full the full scope of it. And then I became a huge fan of uh, Takeshi Kitano because of it, beat Takeshi. And uh, I just started to, to hunt down all of, all of his stuff. Because I was just like, that guy looks familiar. And there was a TV show in the 80s called Takeshi's Castle, um, which ran for a very short period of time. But in the UK, we got a, we got a, a, a chap called Craig Charles who did the dub over it. <laughs> So he would actually be going through what the... And it was just this crazy... It's like Squid Game, but nobody gets killed, essentially. Oh, man. But it's like just annihilate people with assault courses that just defeat you. 
And, and it was called Takeshi's Castle because it was Takeshi Kitano who was like the the main antagonist of the show. Wow. Um, and it was it was absolutely amazing stuff. But yeah, Battle Royale is is and I, so I that poster I sent you a picture of the poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That poster that's actually an OG film poster that I I actually won at an auction because i i and i then i took it to get framed so i actually that that post just came you know circular wrapped chewed up and then i i just immediately took that and got that got that frame because it is it is boss film man boss as film. you can tell a lot by a person by what movie posters they choose to have framed in their home and how they take care of them you yeah, take yeah. very good care of your toys and your cat yeah and your mom <laughs> don't i'm a horrible person I, of that. course. Oh. And on the side, you're a horrible person. We know you're horrible. <laughs> we know you're sexist. You're every oh. phobe and ist there is. We need to create actually a few new ones for you. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> but so funny. yeah, let's 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 not not even pretend that I'm I'm anything other no. than awful. Thank you. No, you're a sweetheart. I feel like everybody I know who's oh, I don't want to ruin your reputation, but I feel like everybody I know who's awful is a sweetheart. <laughs> and <laughs> They have boundaries and opinions, which people are like, I didn't remember that. Humans aren't supposed to have those. And it's like, no, that's kind of the best thing. <laughs> so we got a little bit of tartan Asian cinema there. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys uh, like a little bit of anime. We love anime. Um, What's your favorite anime? Right now, we're so devoted to One Piece, it would be hard to say not. There is but, so much One Piece that, like, we when the <clears throat> when the live action came in, we were we were like a, a toe deep into One Piece, and the animation initially turned me off. Yeah, okay. I was initially like, it's okay, but it's not like so fantastic. I didn't warm to it immediately. I'm I'm sorry, I was wrong. And then I watched <laughs> the live action, and while it wasn't exactly like the anime. It was it was so full of love for the anime. It made me love everything yeah. about the anime. It just totally twisted everything on my the head for me, and I got obsessed with it. I would say Death Note was what we really Ooh. got obsessed with initially. Okay. Light is such a piece of shit. I love. Oh. Light. we like bad guys. Obviously, he was so well written, and he was a sociopath for no reason. I wish the live action would have been like the Japanese ex exchange student Light, who was in America, and he yeah. was still Japanese. He was yeah, still yeah, yeah. insane. He was. We still don't talk about that live action. Ooh, I remember I went out for it after. They're like, "Well, we're already making it," and I'm like, "Oh, well, I love it. I would do this, 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 and that." And they're like, "Oh no, we're doing this and that." I'm like, "Oh, mm. well, I hope it works out." But that's it's even as a fan, it was like. You know, if you really wanted to do that too, Taylor Swift loves Death Note and she loves that other character. I would have cast her as the one that ends up with the other Death Note. The, the shinny gummy eyes. Yeah, because it would have been, because every girl in the world would have been like, what's Death Note? I guess I like it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been one of the best things to ever happen for anime. Just like uh, I hear Taylor Swift is going to play Dazzler in Deadpool. I guess girls will all like Deadpool now. Like, there we go. Yeah, I know. I I big fan of Dead uh, Dead Death Note myself. Really enjoyed it. Uh, was really kind of surprised at how long they made Light bad. <laughs> you know, because you, you, there were so many instances where it's just like he's on the verge of getting caught. He's on the verge of getting caught. Oh, you're dead. Yeah. And now you're dead. And <laughs> now you're dead. And now you're dead. And then of course, you know, I mean, look, spot you know, spoilers. You it doesn't work but out. You for were him. always thinking I was gonna take him down. It was just like, no. That kind of you love Elle so much. And then when they're working together, you're like, Light, what the fuck are you doing? This guy's like and uh, then he then he gets him, and I'm like, oh, now everyone hates you. When like, Light is so arrogant to leave the puzzle, Elle, did you know Shinigami like apples too? Why did you have why to say did you say Shinigami? Shinigami? He would have never, never in a million would he have... years figured it out. Oh, it was so frustrating. <laughs> it's only a matter of time now, dude. You can do the yeah, shit yeah, yeah. do the burning book if someone pulls open the drawer, but you just said Shinigami. Oh, but man. Uh Hunter Hunter is a man. Immaculate. It's I also love, yeah. great. Cute thing about Hunter Hunter, the guy who does that is married to the girl who does Sailor Moon. Oh. I did mm -hmm. not know that. And they were both lonely. So they made stories about having the best friends in the world, which I was like, I hope you guys have the best marriage in the world. And uh, 
it's been hard for him to write his books because he of his health problems but he's told all of the stories to her so if something happens to him she's gonna finish hunter hunter and to me i'm like that's like so fucking romantic okay now uh i have a question okay i uh i th there were no homeworks to be set for this or anything but i did say if if you got the opportunity because you hadn't seen Cowboy Bebop, uh, yeah. could you, tr if you could, if you could, if you couldn't, it's fine. Could you uh, potentially watch the first episode? Did you watch the first episode of Cowboy Bebop? We did not. Oh, okay. I did not. I watched the full, uh, I watched the full live action and some of my friends were actually on that. And I was like, this is okay. This is kind of cool. And then I looked on Tumblr for Cowboy Bebop. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. This is amazing and soulful yeah. and deep and sexy and cheeky and funny, which I didn't, I thought that a little bit of that was missing from the show. All of it? All of it. Yeah. Well, I didn't know the source material. You've been sending me these great songs and I'm like, oh, this is Cowboy Bebop. Oh, this, this fucking rocks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the one, uh, one uh, the last one I sent was, that's actually the end theme. Oh, that's beautiful. So that, that plays that plays every at the end of every episode. And there's such a heavy jazz vibe music wise throughout it all. And because uh any excuse to watch Cowboy Bebop again, I this morning, uh when I got back, I, I said, oh, I'm gonna put on the first episode just to completely refresh. Yeah. Uh in in case we talk about it today. Yeah, I'm now like episode six. <laughs> it's Again, one season, right? In a movie? Just one season in a movie. And the movie oh. takes place before the end of the season. Oh, so wow. The, the, the movie fits in a, a, a roughly around after episode 19 or something. Around approximately. But it's, As... it's one season and out. And uh, it's, it's a story. I mean, there's a story there and the story ends. So it's very, you know. Is it better to go in blind with just the Netflix under my belt, or should I know something about it as no, it's blind. supposed to be going? No, blind? nothing. No, absolutely <laughs> blind. You go, you go in, you go in blind, because uh, like some of the characters don't even turn up until a couple of episodes in. Like when it, when it starts, you haven't got the whole crew together. Uh -huh. the, the, you know, when you start, it's only uh, it's only Spike and uh, Jet Black. That's it. They're the only they're the two characters, and then. It, it develops from there. So it's, it introduces the characters very, very well, then puts the, the crew together. Aww. Then and there's Bucky. wonderful little sub stories, which go really, really good places, like really good places. We'll do and our that, homework for next time we do this. We'll watch it all and then we'll come back and chat about it. If you'll have us. If you'll have us. I don't know. Chat, if you want well, as in two twins again, you let them know. We'll get a triplet if it's just boring. <laughs> two twins, one ass. Uh, this is something. I don't know. There's something there. I don't know. I don't know. We can work something. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, no, you can absolutely. I mean, I was actually going to say what I should have said. Oh, fuck it. We'll say it now. Anyway, when before we even started streaming, I was going to say to you, I think we should just put a time limit on the stream because I think we could most likely go forever oh yeah Ooh. so so if wow. we put it if we were like say right we we'll have three <laughs> hours no more than three hours and then and then that would be it but, oh, no, sorry chat we got to cut off there we got to stop <laughs> and well, and you know if you if you want this uh want this uh more then uh you know we'll have to come back and do another we'll have to do another one what's the, not to be cheeky but what's the longest you've ever gone oh my streaming well when i was 22 <laughs> No, okay, we don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> don't need to worry about that. What's the longest you've ever got to hear? 38 seconds, but that's not true. I, no, well, that is a whole, that, that 38 second meme originates from something completely different, but got turned into my sexual performance because <laughs> chat. <laughs> but, but 38 oh, seconds God. is how long I lasted trying to watch Wheel of Time on, on Amazon. Season one or two? Well, season one. Wow. I started, and it just started with a narration, and the narration was just just uh, this woman just going, "Men are shit. Men are fucking crap. Men fucked everything up. Fuck man." I was like, "I'm out. I'm out." Thirty eight seconds, and because I sort of made this statement of, "I lasted thirty eight seconds," 
then the chat was just like, you like to take this in bed. And then it then that became a whole meme. Uh, I have done, uh, I have done two in my lifetime, two 24 hour streams. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And I did do uh, the other week, it actually wasn't that long ago. I did do 11, 12 hour stream. Wow. I was playing something. Gaming? When about, uh, yeah, gaming. Yeah. yeah. That would make sense. When we were um, game show hosts for Blumhouse's Elevator, the <laughs> game show law meant once the experience started with the contestants, we weren't allowed to end it until they won the game show. So we would be on li uh, live on camera and making stupid jokes for like anywhere from 12 to 16, maybe 18 hours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's so, it was an hour show, but they didn't show all the breakdowns that would happen. Like, or the amount of times we'd have to say the l rules of the game over and over again. Raise your hand if you understand. Nothing. Uh oh. Say the rules. <laughs> Raise your hand if you understand. Nothing. Sometimes <laughs> the thing would already be started. <clears throat> And they just stand there and they don't do anything. And then they have the producers have to stop it and be like, hey, when you said you got it, did you really understand what you had to do now? No. Okay, no. let's start again. Let's, and let's kill that. Also, some of them lost and they lost so epically. They're like, let's do that again because we can't have everyone losing every single one. On no, the we can't. We really can't. <laughs> we really oh. can't. Oh, the pilot, everyone lost everything and all of those games Sylvan and i had been put in to test if you know they were idiot proof if you could figure it out and we figured them all we out in under team. a minute i was so scared because you get hired to be a host and then all the executives put you in front they're like now you do the saw puzzle and you're like yeah when they, okay. put, they put the helmet on her and tied her up in chains in a straight and, jacket yeah and they're like there's a little walkie talkie okay. in her head yell at her how to untie herself it was so I got it, but I felt like I survived a jigsaw puzzle because after I did it, I was like, I am alive. Um, <laughs> but they were scary situations. Like there was one where we put them in a we shot in a slaughterhouse and then we brought a bunch of bathtubs in and we put a contestant in a bathtub and we put a hood over their head and we strapped them down and then we put leeches everywhere. And then the faucet turned on and started spraying blood in their face so even if you're a cool gamer when that happens in the light we're like your nightmare begins now do you know the rules everyone's shitting themselves they're like <laughs> this is for what five grand i don't know i think i'll just work at fast food i'm good you know like <laughs> i ain't done that for five grand fuck that <laughs> uh, that noise <laughs> we're downstairs with a fucking latte all right Oh Just man, go. but you would be great on TV. We'd probably yeah. be like, we'll give you extra for charity as you want to like, <laughs> come in the house. <laughs> okay, I'll do. do uh, I'm. I got. There's. There's some stuff I want to do. There's some stuff I want to do. Um, twenty. Like I said, twenty twenty five. The two year plan. All that. When that's done, there's there's a couple of things that I'm I'm interested in in uh, in doing. I'm, I'll, I'll I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Okay, it's, nice. it's gonna be. It's gonna be a fun time. It's gonna be a silly fun time. It's gonna be a fun time though. Um well if you need identical twins for your silly fun times, let us know. We can show up. Boom. Yeah, just like that. 18 hours, Manchester Airport. 18 yeah. hours, I'll see you at the airport, man. See you at the airport, Manchester. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, so uh you didn't you didn't watch okay. Well that's something that's something for you to, to massive experience. But we both because uh, I saw we we're both uh, big fans of uh, Perfect Blue. Yeah. Uh the uh the movie. When did uh when did you first see that? Oh my gosh. I think I randomly saw it on TV somehow. I mm -hmm. think so. And I didn't know what obviously the whole th spoiler guys, we'll talk about the plot, but it's a total head fuck, right? So the whole time mm -hmm. you're like, who is this person pursuing her? And then you're like, oh, she's not right. It's like yeah, a De so Palma right. movie in yes, an anime. It's a Brian De Palma anime. Yeah, if you if you don't know, chat Perfect Blue animated movie. It's an animated movie about a former J-pop star uh, who wants to go legit. So she wants to get into to proper acting, wants to get her name out there. So she does, you know, roles which are more adult uh, and this kind of thing to to get her name. And it, it sort of spirals a bit. Life sort of spirals, and she has a stalker. And that's uh, and that's the sort of premise. She's got a stalker, and and things are happening, and then th things happen. And I think I 
I liked it because the, tw- the stalker looked a lot like her, right? So that was like, oh my God, is it me doing it? Is it a twin? Like, <laughs> it's just acting out your fantasy of killing me? No, mm. no, that's I not- came out half sized in the womb. So she's been like trying to liquid snake me for a long, tw- long time. I don't know. I think wow. I. Wow. I think I like that things like Perfect Blue because it's like Fight Club. It's very Tyler Durden esque. Like mm-hmm. a person gets to a certain point in their life and there is a mental break of some sort. And then the two personalities kind of have to sauce it out. And that's mm. cool. That's really cool. It's like a, a coming of age story you actually want to see. Yeah. No, it, it was, it was, it's great. I mean, it, I did a stream on it a couple of years ago. And uh, it was just nice to to sort of get into get, because I saw it on TV first, like you did, mm-hmm. and then I bought it uh, on Blu-ray. And when you buy it on Blu-ray, whatever, then you actually get the proper version. Yeah, you don't get the censored for TV version. And there are certain elements in the uncensored version which make sense towards this sort of breaking point uh, because uh, she. The one thing that was on both releases was, uh, you know, she she does this bit where she's a victim of a, a an assault, yeah, uh, which is part of the character she plays. But what you don't see is before then, she's she's taking all these glamour shots and she's completely naked. Now in Japan, that is very taboo to do that because in Japan they still blur up the uh, the nether region. Wow! Uh, in, for for the for the vast majority of it, so it's actually uh, very sort of risque to, to do what she was doing. So you have to. If you understand it from a Japanese cultural perspective, it was sort of like a taboo that was almost being broken. And Japan can, one of the sort of negative things about Japan is when you sort of break a cultural taboo, they they kind of go for you big time. Really? It, yeah, because it's such a such a sort of regimented society of of of, of you know how you should behave, how you should act, you know, respect, uh, you it's know, a- just adhere to the rules. Yeah. Man, it's such a culture shock because, like, growing up with people like Madonna or Marilyn Chambers, all of that, there is such a, or, or even if you think about Marilyn Monroe, her first few photo mm. shoots, she did them topless, and that was just kind of more accepted. People were like, "Oh, we like the female form, we like nudity," but in some cultures, like that's that's almost like selling your soul. That's like one of the evilest things you could do. But you look at all these young starlets that are trying to change their image. Like, look at what Miley Cyrus did for years. That was like. So, like, don't look at me as Hannah Montana. I'm this well, is that. That was the, that was the sort of the perfect blue element, you know, yeah. somebody who's who's in a very sort of uh, kid cultured or sort of family friendly environment. Even though it's again, it's sort of weird because you know these J pop stars are very much kind of sexualized and then all that. Oh right yeah. Time. Oh god, yeah. And then wanted to go legit which uh you know miley kind of went you know from one extreme to the other as well it's interesting because like i i I see a lot of it in the film and television like it's a dirty disgusting horrible business filled with criminals and then there's the music industry that's worse that we don't even talk about or touch on it's just like they sing songs about how openly awful it is all these things that happen to women and then you don't really talk about it but it's interesting because like there are certain things you have to do for your image if you want to get to a certain point. And I mean, like it's it's such a fucking interesting way that it's done. And it's so weird that nudity is so taboo because like I feel if you grow up seeing nudity, like I every slasher movie had like full frontal nudity. I was just like, oh, she's hot. I hope when I grow up, I look like that. That's awesome. <laughs> like and then whereas now it's like, Ooh, don't look at that. And I'm like, well isn't the female foreign that's been celebrated forever isn't that hot isn't it i guess the connotation i mean like j pop stars are very highly sexualized was there a difference than if one of them decides to do a magazine shoot and they're like yeah i'm fully naked here does that ruin culturally what they're going for yeah because it's super western but in a way i don't know i mean whatever makes you feel great about yourself that's fine no judgment i mean it's a pop yeah star. i will I, think a lot I of, love making of... pop stars. Doesn't everybody? I mean, well, hey, when I was a kid, Madonna was one of the my big, you know, big crushes as a kid. You know, oh. you, you, when you used to stick things on your wall, you know, that'd be my Madonna section, my, oh, Jillian, my Jillian Anderson section. Oh, know. yeah. What about Michelle Pfeiffer? 
Um, I was okay with Shell Pfeiffer, but I, I was, I, I seem to have got more, for want of a better phrase, got more into her <laughs> uh, as I got older than than I was when I was younger. I, I don't know. It's, it's sort of then, right? Because if you if you're an adult, and you're looking at the whole Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman vibe. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot more that you can see into it. There's a lot more of of the sort of S and M uh, aspect yeah, of oh, it, yeah. uh, which you think, yeah, as a kid, that all goes fucking over your head. It's just this woman with a whip and and tight leather outfit and all this kind of stuff. So there's sort of elements of that which you, you you're completely missing. Uh, Madonna, I don't know what it was with Madonna. Madonna was just this sort of force of nature. Yeah. Oh yeah. When you when you're a kid, you know, because uh, she it just seemed to be somebody, some woman who's just like, I don't give a fuck. Oh my god. You know, I'll, I'll do anything. I'll 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 be everything, and I will consistently reinvent myself. She was, that so was just isolated such a as that kind of person, though, because there were there. I never thought I thought that was Madonna. Like when someone's like, oh, she's a bit of a extra sexual person i was like yeah but that's madonna that's who she is yeah. she's a super super sexual woman just so we don't need a thousand women that way we have madonna that's like she where the polar opposite you. goes it it's so hard to make a sexual blip nowadays in entertainment because entertainment is so sexual yeah they even have uh any shock value image that they do i mean Madonna having a black Jesus that lost her Coke sponsorship back yeah. in the day. Pepsi. 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 Sorry. Pepsi, Sorry, yeah. Coke. Are you watching? Coke's like, we were fine with Madonna. We're like, make it with more black Jesuses. We're good. The only Coke in the 80s was up the nose. That was the. Uh... <laughs> but nowadays, that's like nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that'd be mild as, as you like. You know, oh, what, yeah. I saw something on Twitter the other day, which was going over my timeline with this person was unveiling their tattooed. Jesus and trans uh, Mother Mary. I was just like, wow. and they were there with their balloon fucking collagen lips. Like, mm, no. they're, they're just stunning. they've hit, taken so many shots at Catholics that they're barely even responding anymore. They're like, say something, get mad. Still, and like, they're like, I don't know. It's they're just gonna burn time. in hell. Fuck him, you know. <laughs> they're like, they're like, I, I gotta buy Christmas shit and go to Christmas yeah, church. Yeah. I got, I got the masses. We're lighting the candles right now. I'll be upset yeah. next year. We got Advent. It's a whole thing. I got, you know? uh, we got midnight mass. We get tired. We're feeding the poor. It's just like just a trying thing. to get mentally prepared for Lent. Yeah, gonna come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mentally prepared yeah. for Lent. <laughs> I, I think it's funny because, like, I know that outrage used to be the number one marketing tool and people are still really keen on it. But don't they miss when people were happy? Yeah. Like, don't. Uh... <laughs> I remember one company, I won't say which one, but they hired us because all they would ever do is get dissed online and made fun of by reviewers. And then they're like, your reviews are so nice. Maybe they won't make fun of us if we hire you. <laughs> And the reviews came out and they said nice stuff about us and then still made fun of the company and they oh they were so angry and i remember talking to the guy and i was like you have no idea how funny you make my workplace and he's like what why and i was like do you know this person who runs this studio and he's like no and i was like well he knows you <laughs> and you're in the emails all the time and he's like wow he's like i didn't even realize it but the movies are shit i'm like I guess they must have picked up on that, eh? <laughs> what a realization! <laughs> I, mean, I think uh, Disney's just coming to that one now. Is it? Is it actually? Are we the baddies? Yes, Disney. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you are the baddies. Yes. Oh, it's like that yeah. Principal Skinner meme. Am, is am I out of touch? Yeah, no, it's well, everybody else. Yeah, it's. <laughs> you now, so you just imagine. Uh, the whole Lucasfilm section now just been like, are we uh, the Empire? Yes, you are the Empire. You are not the Rebellion. Wasn't the Empire always the States, though? Um, They've always been the Empire. They've yeah, never been like... anything but the Empire. <laughs> they watch the movie, they're like, wait a minute, is this about us? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when you when you come out and destroy uh, essentially your whole marketplace. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think you're the good guys. 
<laughs> I don't think you're good guy. When you've got your your biggest Star Wars fan reacting to Luke Skywalker coming back at the end of Mandalorian and, and shedding a tear and then coming out going, ha, gay. you know, it's like, no, no you, mm, oh man, mm, I think it's it's you. It's not me. It's you. <laughs> When you come over to uh, the Americas, if we end up in California, you have to visit Lucasfilms because it is one of the most inspiring places for like the OG movies. You see the miniature models and all that stuff. And some of the guys that are from the old like crew, like the guys are there and they'll tell you the real stories and you'll get that experience. And it's it bums me out because those guys still exist. There's, it's not like all the artists went on yes. and moved you could just be like hey guys can you do a star war and they're like yeah all right yeah. how about yeah. this one all right there was one star war then another star war happened and it became star wars <laughs> see that's that's how it all came together i just want a star war <laughs> I, just... I liked it when when they said star wars isn't about Always about war. And she's like, it's in the fucking title. It's not about war, man. It's in the title of your fucking franchise, you dumb cow. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, the one that got me the most mad, and I forgot who said it. They said that X-Men was a sexist title, and they wanted Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, the, the Victoria Alonso. It was Victoria oh. Alonso. She's like, why Why are they called X-Men? There's, there's been a lot of women in there as well. And you're just like... I'm so tell me, mad. tell me you don't understand what X Men is. You can read. It. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it couldn't have been an actual thought. I feel like there's like a conspiracy, and they're like, "How do we make men and women hate each other?" They're like, "Hey, have you considered?" That's never gonna happen, though. <laughs> right? Because while they're there trying to like play Battle of the Sexes, we're here on a stream having a gay old time. Because <laughs> you know? that's that's what you end up doing, you, and and. You know, we get called ISFO, all kinds of shit. Just, you couldn't get a more organically diverse group of people if you tried. Oh, yeah. And, but it's internal misogyny. It's internal racism. It's blah, blah, blah. It's this, that, and the other. And and it's it's like, look, you do you. You do your projection. You do your fucking copium shit. We're just going to go over here and do our own shit. I mean, you're doing your own shit. you got fucking Ripperverse going on. So. Oh, I'm so excited about the rip. We know all the lore now. Like, oh yeah, now that we're editors and lore masters, the first thing we did is let's crack open that ISOM 3. Yeah. Let's look at all the unreleased <laughs> projects. Let's see how far along Yaira 2 is. I read Oh my god, Yaira 2, Yaira does things to show off how um she's very fashionable. And I can I don't know if this is a spoiler, but Yaira will go for a swim. Yeah. Yeah, NTA. Sorry, she what? may swim. She may swim. We get an email from the boss. We're like, we got to talk about the swimming. I watched about. you. <laughs> Access denied. Wow. <laughs> I'm looking for the Eric sketch. I haven't found it. I keep emailing. I'm like, guys. No. Um, for a t-shirt, I'm just gonna tattoo it to my forehead. So <laughs> wow. It, right. You know that's an adult. I want cap with it on. Yeah. What's it? What's it? Um, after doing. No restraints play for Marvel then with with, with Black Widow, and it was. It, I mean, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I mean, that's kinky enough as it is. But right. but it is it is fucking brilliant. Oh, it's like you. such a good book, and 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 to, like people like me, there's there's a worry. There is a legit worry. But when you when you like somebody or or when you you see somebody, you think they look like a good person. And then they want you to look at their work, or oh yeah, or you or you to, to research them. You have to look at their work. And I've done it before. I've met a couple of people, thought they're very nice, and then one of the, one of them actually said, "Hey, can you watch this series? I did this like series, and I just wondering because you're quite, you know, can you read, look at it, come back with your, your kind of critical take on it?" Uh -oh. I was like, "I mean, okay." I was like, "If you want to, but I will be honest." And they're like, "Oh no, that that is exactly what I want. I want you to be honest." So, they never oh, want it when they say be honest. Oh God. No. <laughs> so I, I watched it and then I got back. I was like, right. I said, okay. I said, no, this was good. I like this, this, this bit here. Why? This doesn't make any sense. And I, and, and, I, and I break down why it didn't make any sense to them. And that was it. They were just like, I got you know, so mad. I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> so you, know? you must have been right. You must well, have been right. I, 
you know, I, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like, I'm, look, I don't give a fuck, mate. You know, I don't give a fuck. So there's always that sort of worry, though. But but we, they were they were like somebody I didn't know, but who wanted me to look over this stuff. When you like, you know, I, I saw you guys and I've seen you interact, and I'm like, they, they sound like they sound sound as a fucking pound, you know. Aww. And I was just like, and Eric was just like, oh yeah, what well, I read No Strengths Play, and I knew then that I had to get them on board. And I'm thinking, oh, I've got to read this, and then you think you do get this thing in your head that just goes. What if I don't fucking make it? <laughs> you know, what if I read it and I'm just like, oh, you know, it was, it was fine. You know, it's just like, okay, just like, oh, how do you sort of react to that? Well, so it was, you had a good chance because it's not like Eric minces words about how he feels about comic books. No. And uh, I remember people sent Black Widow to him and I, I feel like the vibe was like, oh, it's going to be another shitty comic written by girls who don't read comics. And I was like, and that's when I get super excited because when chicks, like when I saw Spider-Man the musical and saw how dangerous, I was like, whoa, if I ever direct a Spider-Man, I got to make a really good one where no one dies. So, you know, you kind of see the, the lay, lay of the land. So when we, as fans, we kind of we were reading the comic books where we were like, I don't want a chick to do this. This looks stupid. I don't want, I don't want them. I don't want, I don't need Captain America to look stupid for a black widow to be cool. What if they're both cool and then it's cool, you know? But that's a, that's a, that's a current dayism though. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, you know, 15 years ago, nobody gave a fuck if a man or a woman was writing the book. No. Yeah. Because, because 15 years ago, you were thinking they're there based on merit. Yeah, absolutely. So, One of my best compliments is if someone sees a movie or reads Black Widow and they're like, oh, I didn't know girls wrote that. That's amazing. And I like it because I don't want someone to read it and be like, I like it because they're girls. That's the biggest <laughs> insult. When someone's like, you're my favorite female director. I'm like, ew. Out yes, of like 12 yes. ew. Chicks, Fuck you. Fuck you. Do you know how short <laughs> that list is of known versions of us? And then you cut it again for directors that do horror. That's a very small list. But thank you for putting me. You know, you, 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 you know they're fucking assholes when they go, you're my favorite twin directors. Uh, oh, I better be. I goddamn better be. Because <laughs> <laughs> what if? Because if they go, you're my second favorite twin directors. You're like, what did you fucking say? Who? Hmm? What did you just? Are the Olsen twins directing now? Yeah. Ouch. I would be furious, but good for them. <laughs> I'm happy we didn't horribly let you down yeah. on Black Widow, unless we did, and this is the time that you're going to reveal it. You want to see? Well, now that we're on live stream. on stream to humiliate. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 honest to God, I, honest to God, I, I, I wanted to get the individual issues because I'm a collector and that's what I like to do. I love that. Uh, but uh, I couldn't because I just couldn't, I couldn't find all of it. So I, I ended up picking up the the trade paperback and and just have been systematically just trying to grab the individual issues as as and when that I can get my hands on them. And uh, I, I legit said to myself because it was you were coming on the real BBC and it was about a week before the real BBC. So I thought I'll just five parts. I'll read one issue, you know, one issue of the trade paper because you know they're they're divided by the covers. So you you come yeah. to an end of a segment, you see the cover for the next, then you turn it. Well, I said I'll just do one a day because. I just, I just thought that would sort of be what I'd be okay with. I'd be like, read, okay, there's one. Let's pop it to one <laughs> side. We'll pick it up tomorrow. And I just, I just, could, I just couldn't put it down. I just had to blow through the whole thing. Just could not put it down. So it just, it was one sat. It was just one sitting, just like douche, do okay, part two. Okay, let's go around. Oh three, man, that's, down, yeah. that's the best compliment. We wanted it. We wanted it to be exciting. We wanted people to be like, oh, this Nat story should have always existed. And you always talk about what a badass she is. Let's see her. Let's just see her be like really great and crazy and and use that she's she's a she. Like her dressing in disguises and pretending to be other people and seducing people to get into places. Like that's fun to me. Like I I just love Nat to death. And I love that she leaves Captain America and at the end he has his little baguette and she's like, I'm sorry, people were mean to you. And she's like, Don't listen. And he's like, Okay, thanks. And he's like, please don't go. She's like, No, I have to flip out the window. I'm mysterious. And that's yeah. the end. Yeah. <laughs> It was just, it was just, and I don't mean it. Don't take this in any way disrespectfully. It was just entertaining. Ah, you know? that's good. And, and I don't mean that, as, and it doesn't lack any sort of levels because there was there was a lot of levels on there. But it was just entertaining. I was entertained, and I I needed I needed more. You know, I needed to to go through. And it's actually quite sad getting to the end because just like 
fuck, you should have just done a huge run of this thing, you know? Oh, thank really you. Initially, uh, we were under the impression that, I think still at book two, we were under the impression that it was going to be an ongoing series. And yeah. what was going to happen is Natasha was going to take that hard drive and she was going to track down all the high rollers that were payrolling uh, yeah, yeah. the sex trafficking. And the next place she was going to go would be South America. And at the time, uh, Daredevil had been hit by a fucking truck. Yes, he did. And uh, <laughs> he doesn't have a he doesn't have a lot of luck with traffic. That guy. Oh he? I love Daredevil. He's my fave. But at a certain point, when they revealed his identity, which why he ever admitted to, I will never understand. Bad writing. They just kind of ruined a crucial element of the character. And every time I check in, like maybe Matt's doing okay. It's like. Oh, no, he's been fucking hit by a truck. Every bone in his body is broken. I'm like, doesn't that hurt for him? I'm like, oh, yeah. He's <laughs> he's suffering. And meanwhile, every, like, villain is coming in and taunting him while he's there. Can he hear them? Oh, yeah. I'm like, what is this? Who wants to read this? <laughs> Anyways, our story was going to pick up. Matt was rehabilitating. He had given up on God like he does. Yeah, he does. Obviously. The <laughs> and she's like, you need to go into the brotherhood. You need to reconnect with God. Even if you don't go into holy orders, you need to make peace with God because I know this is important with you. And I'll go too because I've done things. And you'd be like, great, we're going to go there. You'll be a nun. I'll be a brother. We're going to try holy orders. But what she's really there is to take a bad group of priests sure. down, which yeah, Matt yeah. doesn't <laughs> know about. And Matt's like, why are you doing this? And she's like, listen, I'm saving your soul. And doing this. And hey, you could help me too. I mean, I think God wants us to both do this because yeah. you're here. God loves yeah. everyone killing Peter Fowl. It'd be fun. It's kind of yeah. like a continuation of Guardian mm -hmm. Devil too because he had the whole evil baby, what is my religion thing. So it's just, you know, like a little continuation of that. And it reminds me of the initial pitch for the X-Men movies with Fassbender. It was supposed to be Magneto Nazi Hunter. Oh. And they said no one wants to watch Magneto track down Nazis and kill them. I'm like, oh, I would I'm watch... Okay with that. 30 <laughs> movies of that. I would still be watching it. Oh my God. And a multi language speaking Michael Fassbender coming in and be like, oh, <laughs> give it to me. But Black Widow killing pedophiles. And it's very Red Room without forcing her back into the Red Room. Yeah. And Black Widow's story is oh, do you remember this one time at the Red Room? Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares anymore. Yeah. And it's nice to see her be like that mother that she can't be for other children and be like, look, these kids are like me. It's like I'm saving my childhood self over and over again. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very spiritual. Yeah, it would have been so do nice. Do not mistake to this woman for being soft. Oh, oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> that was great. That was just great. Yeah, I like I like that a lot. Oh, that was good. Thank you. Yeah, we we write Marvel like they'll never let us write it again. And literally every time we wrote it, we're like, this is one and done. If they even print it, well, and I mean, but in all fairness, that's that's a good thing. Yeah. This, that's that. If that is going to be the legacy at Marvel, it's a pretty fucking great one to have. And it's one I think that people will look back on and be like, why the fuck? Why the fuck? And it'd be, oh yeah, because we were too busy being fucking retarded. That's why. For for a lot of years. So, you know, good talent, good but 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 that, uh if that there happened, was... would you be here now? You see, that's, that's so true. Yeah, it's so true. I wouldn't be at the Ripiverse. And I will say when the Black Widow movie came out, one of my favorite responses were fans being like, should have got the Soskas to do no restraints. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's right there. And I know I know for a fact that they had read No Restraints play because uh, they said, you can't release an R-rated comic. So our editor, who's a sweetheart, said, we're not changing anything. I'm going to change the rating, but we're not changing anything in the book. Mm. And we did it. Yeah. And word on the street is ScarJo read the comic. So I, I pray that she's like, okay, one more movie, but I want to do this one. Hey, yeah, she's yeah, dead yeah. and coming back from the dead. I mean, it would be, it would be perfect. Just instead of Cap, it would be all the Avengers there. And she'd be like, fuck all of you. Uh, it's going to be hard. I heard Robert Downey Jr. said no, AKA more money. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said uh, contract negotiations. That's what he no, said. Yeah. You can tell that contract negotiations were happening because Chris Evans just badmouthed the Disney process, and people are like, "What?" And I was like, "Oh, he's going to negotiate." Even Tom Holland said, "I don't know if I want to be Spider Man anymore." Well, I, 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 I do know some. I do know somebody within Disney, and uh, when the when the the Marvels thing was going on, uh, the Marvels test screening. Uh, <laughs> 
there was there was a line that was going through Marvel, which was we need to skate quick over thin ice. Oh yeah, <laughs> because they saw it and they were like, "This is shit." And that they, I mean, words were like they were actually used. This is shit, and we need it cut. So they they actually ended up with a an eighty eight minute uh, cut, and that was the one that they had to release because they couldn't go any lower than eighty eight minutes of runtime. And what wow. was said by this person who saw it from Disney. What was said when it finished was, uh, how do we get uh, Robert and Chris back? <laughs> <laughs> that was actually discussed there and Someone then. Someone send hookers to their place yeah, now. <laughs> They're married <give>, shit. <laughs> no, just Robert, we got steak. You can get off that <laughs> vegan shit any fucking time. <laughs> we got fucking ribeye, T-bone, anything. You want it? We got it, mate. Red meat. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, ready for but yeah, that was that was one of the discussions in the actual screening room was how do we get Robert and Chris back? Because this is fucked. Start begging with John Favreau, be like, John, remember <laughs> how you guys said don't kill Tony Stark? We're sorry. Do you think yeah. Batgirl was the equivalent of the Marvels? Do you mm. think there was something like the Marvels in that film? And they were like, you know what? Let people it's better for a film is actually the most valuable before it's released. Yep. It's 100%. Uh, yeah. So an unreleased film could be more marketable than a f troubled film. Yeah. Having seen, I mean, as somebody who's, you know, pretty heavy into Batman, uh, having seen, like, the imagery of, of uh, Garfield Lines as Firefly, awful. Just, you know, awful. Got nothing against, you know, what's magic but uh, awful. Uh, uh, the, the Batgirl, it's not, that's not Barbara Gordon, you know? The fact that they were going to bring her her trans best friend in, which is a, an awful story from New 52, which is when Batgirl was at its most dog shit. They put her in the Burnside outfit, which is the most dog shit costume. And do you know why they made the Burnside costume? No. So, so cosplayers could easily cosplay it at conventions. That's not what cosplay is about. It's no. about saving. It is when it gets corporatized. That's what that's what happens when it gets corporatized. It's like, oh my god, we need a costume that cosplayers can easily cosplay at convention. It's so, so that's sad. that's why that one was there. <laughs> Sean Gordon Murphy then retconned that costume. Well, got rid of that costume, did his own costume, which I actually quite like. Uh, but uh, you know, I I mean, we were we were discussing uh oracle barbara gordon oracle uh recently and i said you know and i said this is this would be the i think one of the perfect films for you is you, you have a freshly paralyzed barbara gordon oh, yeah uh, she like doesn't seven. yeah she she's uh she's full of anger because yeah. she can no longer walk she's full of anger because she can no longer yeah. put on the batgirl costume she doesn't know what she's going to do she feels helpless she feels hopeless she feels useless uh, she wants to push Dick Grayson away because yeah. you know Dick Grayson, one of the most athletic people, and now here she is bound to a wheelchair. Yeah, she's trying to push him away team. from from uh, their feelings together. Uh, where what's my place? And then you you have people, of course, from the flip side of all that, realizing that, that Commissioner Gordon's daughter has been paralyzed, and this is something that we can potentially take advantage of. Yes. Uh, so you could have a whole sort of event oh, going on in the apartment it, they, there were so many things that you can do because oracle is more infinitely more interesting i think than than barbara gordon batgirl yeah. oh yeah you know you so can you could have um cassandra kane batgirl no problem mm -hmm. you can have stephanie brown batgirl you can have helena bertinelli back but i think helena bertinelli works far better as huntress uh, oh, yes. so so probably wouldn't go there but you could it's a it's a thing that you could do so you don't need to have Barbara Gordon as, as Batgirl. You don't need to have that. She's She was way better as Oracle, way more interesting than Oracle, and I think provided much a better service to the whole of the DC universe. Yeah. As Oracle. yeah. So there, there, that, to me, is, it was a, it's a layup of a movie. You could have a tense thriller, a tense thriller of, of, oh, of yeah. sort of like Panic Room-esque yeah. proportions uh, of, of these people trying to get into... Barbara's apartment. She's pushed Dick away. You know, she's she's pissed him off, or she's told him to fuck off because mm -hmm. she's projecting. She's mad. She's angry. She yeah, she doesn't yeah. want him to go, but she's she's kind of pushes him off. So she's there on her own, trying to fend for herself. No Batman. No nothing. You know how does how does she deal with that? There was a there's a easily a film there. 
That's have amazing. Known. And also p- dudes break into her apartment. Just because our, our last movie, uh, we had an actor, uh, Christian Rose, and he's a wheelchair user. And so many times when he had stunt fights, people were like, how are we going to double him? And our coordinator was like, he's fucking awesome. Let's have him do all of his own stunt fights. And by the time there was like the fifth like fight with zombies and stuff, and it was like crazy, everybody was like, whoa this is awesome i've never i've never actually gotten to see that because we always act like oh well you know they're in the chair so they can't do anything else how cool it would it be that barbara gordon is paralyzed and she's attacked but she's still capable she's smart she, and also yeah, she's yeah, got yeah. all of her upper body she could do some crazy fights in there and you'd be like holy shoot i never even thought of that technique because you've never seen that situation and that i think would be badass double badass if you find an actress who is a chair user to play her instead of just having somebody sit in a chair and then all of a sudden whoa you're actually doing the representation you're always talking about yeah now giving someone an opportunity because no chair users ever get the chance like hardly ever it would be amazing to find an athlete that had been injured and not just for like the fulfillment of diversity which is like check check <laughs> no, they, they they have the they have the muscle memory. They have the because yes! I see like the first person trying to get hold of Barbara, just totally underestimating her as a wheelchair. Yes. Oh, yes. So he's just like you just see it like taking his arm, turning it, sticking it in the wheel of a of a wheelchair, and then rolling breaking it and breaking his yeah. arm. Oh, that'll be so fucking money. And then you, love, everyone love else was just so like, awesome. "What the fuck?" You know, and you so you could sort of see how they could they could they, they could start by being a little bit lax with it. Yeah. And then be like, fucking, what, what is going on? And then, you know, you've got to take it down. You've got to have her at a weak point. You've got to have her out yeah. the chair, getting dragged, whatever it may be. Yeah. You've got to have her at that point. But then then you she rises back up again. That It's... it's 100%. Uh, and it would have so much trauma. Like, opening the door and having Joker shoot you. She wouldn't want to... She, that would, she would be traumatized. She would oh, be severely yeah. traumatized with every interaction. And she'd have to figure out how to remaster that in a way she never had to as Batgirl. Not to mention mm-hmm. the people who are waking up in horrible situations. You have diabetes, you had your leg chopped off. Like, yeah. what the fuck are you going to be able to watch to help you through that? What better than watching Barbara Gordon go from Batgirl to Oracle and yeah. realizing that she's disabled, but she's not powerless. That would be e- Exactly, exactly. <laughs> It's okay. I'll tell my friend at Disney. Oh, no. We gave them more good ideas. DC and Marvel, if you're listening, you got to listen to all these. You got to listen to Nerdrotic. You, the answers are here. The answers are here. They don't. They no. There's just too much. There's too much hubris there. There's too much ego there. There's too much fun. They're self-sabotaging. Oh, yeah. They, they would rather go under or drag everything with them than admit fault, admit mistake, uh, listen to the actual people who buy their shit or used to because but you know but how what virtue bucks i'm sure it's gonna break I'm out sure any day too. now <laughs> it's gonna yeah, be like they're Bitcoin. almost as, worth as much as the real bucks that eric july is making no i mean <laughs> but they're as good as they're not even as good as ious but <laughs> Oh, yeah, Eric's, Eric's crying into his. Yeah, Eric's crying like this. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is such a cool boss. Like, I didn't even know he came from IT originally because I'm Amish and he was helping me get on the system. And then I was like, oh, I'll bug your assistant. He's like, no, I'll help you. And I was like, my boss wants to help me through everything, not his assistant. I was like, this is this is going to take a bit to get used to, like caring. <laughs> it's nice. Eric, Eric's great. Uh, it's just it's just quite hilarious that somebody decided to do it for themselves. Yeah. And uh, that's just made so many people mad. <laughs> How dare you go out with an idea, your own money and, and a dream and actually succeed? How dare you? I'm like, wait a minute. Aren't, aren't you going to be stunning and braving him? <laughs> I've never seen anybody make a comic book and be so criticized. Like, the, like from... <laughs> From looking at how a car looks to being like, I don't know if they would speak like this, or I don't know his inseam. How do I even know who he is? It's just like, <laughs> what's his power? <laughs> I want to know how he got his powers. Where's the, where's the spider that bit him? Like, it's, it's like, <laughs> oh my god, it was so many years before we got an origin for Wolverine, and yeah. then when we did, everyone was like, not good enough. We don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> 
you wanted to know and then we told you and they didn't tell you for the longest time because they're like oh it'll never lead up to the the mystery of where wolverine came from and then when uh um daniel way wrote that he was a sick kid oh no one liked that (laughs) oh he's kind of a pussy as a child oh no i hear that dc are gonna give joker a definitive origin wants which that? one which of the three once they started doing three jokers i was like guys come on did they all <sighs> call into that after another they're like yeah didn't Just any of them like in. file a Whee! copyright thing and yeah. be like wait a minute i'm the joker but that's, that's actually joker? dc's uh that's dc's problem though because because they change their timelines so consistent you know so regularly Ooh. i'd sort of doing these hot sort of like soft resets it's like you know like Batman 400 to Batman 500 is no longer like the continuity. It's now a different continuity, but they still refer back to elements within that continuity. So that's how you've ended up with the three Jokers. That's yeah. Because they're three Jokers from the three continuities, um, which have. That's wild. When we were going to be writing for Zaytana, uh, we were asking like her powers, her age, her origin, her like basic stuff. And they're like, we don't know. We've written it so different so many times. We don't know her age. We don't know what her powers range is. We don't know if she has weakness to the powers. We don't know if she runs out. We don't know any of that. So just, you know, create something. That's why you need a lore master. I, I honestly thought there was one person who's like, Spider-Man wouldn't do that. Rewrite this. But yeah. now there's people like, whatever. Here's a picture of me next to the Spider-Man comic I did. Yeah. I don't need it though. But, you know, I'm the best editor in the world. <laughs> Apple O'Neill. <laughs> when we wrote Black Widow, we tried to put as many things that fans would like as possible in there. Like Madame Mask, not a lot of people know who she is yeah. even. Taskmaster is one of our favorites because he's such a naughty boy. He he plays with Deadpool a lot. And nobody ever really writes a Taskmaster that's a Taskmaster. He's just kind of like a what ha- assassin haven't we used in you know a few books? Yeah, and he was great in No Strengths Play because he was he was playful. But when it got down to the end, it was just like, oh, by the way, I know it's you, Natasha. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've known it all the time. I clocked you a long time ago. And it's just like, oh, good man, you know. It's like, <laughs> okay, good I, man. I liked how he was trying to pick up Tiger and was using poetry because obviously he'd be like, "What? Well, I know everything in the world. How can I pick this chick up?" Oh, this poem is her name. Fuck <laughs> I mean, score is so good. <laughs> I loved making Tech Ed the bad guy. Spoiler, Spoiler alert, alert, guys. Uh, there was going to be a really, really, really grand death for uh, Tech Ed. And something, if you're making movies and you are like me, here's a tip. If you want another death or another evisceration or a torture scene to stay in your movie, yeah. write one that's worse. Write one that's so much worse that they have to divot over to it eventually. They told me Natasha can't kill him. And I was like, this is bullshit. And they're like, no, she cut off the arms there. She set the guys on fire. After we told you no setting guys on fire. And we we're like, we, we, get, I didn't get we did an it email. before. He barely got on fire. <laughs> yeah. Barely. It was a mercy fire. He was but... medium rare. He was <laughs> ultimately she was good because it wasn't her technically killing him she was going to hold him by the propellers of the engine at the back of the boat and oh she was yeah, gonna yeah yeah chum up his legs and he was going <laughs> to beg for her to let him go and she's like i'll let you go and she throws him the sharks come and rip him apart oh it's gonna be sick nah but we that's how we got the arms taken off and the pedophiles on fire. We put so much focus on that death that they're like, ah, don't do that, please. Yeah, but I really liked the end of it because Tech Ed is a very sick person. And a lot of people who are predators against children are victims of uh, predators themselves. And some of them try to normalize that and become disgusting human beings like Tech Ed. So their last back and forth is I had, to, he's like, well, I had to do this. This was what my life was like. And she's like, well, same shit happened to me. And I became me so there's no excuse for it and it's nice she she lets him know that she's gonna kill him she's like if you put your gun on me i'm gonna shoot you and he's like haha and she's like yeah fuck you i thought it's i thought it's actually a little bit of a weird ending yeah uh, because uh having her on the boat and then chris hansen coming in and telling her to take a seat that was just that was just bizarre to me <laughs> uh, natasha it's not me it's not me you should be worried about it. it's chris hansen right. <laughs> 
Ed, why don't you come over here and take a take a seat? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you brought condoms with you, Ed? <laughs> no, I, no. I mean that that Mike Hard's lemonade. That's for me. That's, that's just for me. <laughs> That's funny. I hear a, a story, and uh, oh, actually, maybe is this appropriate? The gang guy? No, I probably should. No, that's not appropriate. <laughs> I'll tell you that story about later. But sometimes Jen and I, to get real life experiences, we ask people who live in certain different lifestyles, and they'll, they're like twins. I'll tell you the story. And sometimes you're like, whoa, I can't. It's because never- we work in horror. People will tell us the most horrible story they have. Some of them are pretty bad. And there's a lot of gang activity in Vancouver. So you're like, oh, whoa. You- I feel you're getting into the story. Stop it. Okay, <laughs> then I won't. I'll tell you the story after it's done. But it was about an enforcer. And I was like, you're saying the story still. Okay. <laughs> you're one Punisher slip away from and this is what he did to him. Anyways, he would have been perfect for Tech Ed. Anyway, at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Prison and everyone lived happily ever after. It's, yes, like in every gang-related story, everyone yes. was fine. Everyone, everyone was fine. Better. Nobody got hurt. No. Hands were shaken. Yep. Bonds were forged. Yep. Fist bumps, and it was over. It was done. Nobody, nobody remotely got fucked up and killed. <laughs> no. In any capacity. Uh, <laughs> let's just go through a few supers, because the supers are coming through. So let's go through oh, a few supers and see what the chat is. Oh, yeah, you guys are here. Hi, chat. Hi, yeah. chat. <laughs> How are you doing? You're right. I ain't seen you. I ain't seen you for ages. How you doing? I didn't. I didn't see you there. Aww, I, I love like two thousand five hundred. Oh, they're awesome. Chat's awesome. They're good people. Like, let's see. Let's see what they got to say. You got Loxo with a five gifted. Thank you, Loxo. <laughs> Caffeinated Wolf with Aww. a five dollar. Hail from the Ripperverse. Love seeing the best looking members of the NDA Trinity. Aww. Alpha Core One shipping starts today. It does. Let's go, Alpha Alpha Core. Core. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Garfield's Bizarre Adventure with a $5. It sucks that Az passed away recently. I Yes, he did. This is a sim, sim, simulation of Az. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Hopefully his AI replacement does a good job in his stead. It's, it's working as intended. Mm-hmm. Working Aww. as intended. Uh, but RIP Az, of May course. He rest. Tragically passed on Friday. Uh, rest in peace, <laughs> As with the two dollars. Says I always knew As's version of heaven was twins. <laughs> no lies detected. Uh, just saying, no lies detected. Hometown hero with a five dollars is picked up. No restraints play. So uh, good hope, Eric gives these lovely ladies more. Uh, they are geniuses. Hell, As Soakers and Ripperverse team. Saying to you, dude, you're gonna. Oh, he's got the um. He's got the uh, the avatar of the then I fucked her in the pussy guy. Oh, nice, <laughs> legendary, wonderful. I have been. I, I, this guy has had me in tears laughing. I know the guy. He's funny. You're How wonderful. Do you? Oh, it, the first time I saw that, I, I honest to God, nearly, I nearly died of asphyxiation laughing. And then I only a couple a couple of days ago. I was sort. I was trying to source that clip. Of something. I don't even think it made it into the final video, but I was sourcing it. So I found it and I put it on, and then I just died laughing again. I just totally died laughing. It's one of those magical news moments where you're like live TV. <laughs> <laughs> it just kept going to different. You know, they just interview one different ones, and it just keep on saying it's like. Do you not have a fucking picture of this guy now in your <laughs> newsroom saying, do not interview this guy. <laughs> he will say he took her home and fucked her in the <laughs> pussy. Good uh, I tell you what, the best news, best news I've fucking seen in ages. Brass Monkey! <laughs> oh, Brass five Monkey. memberships oh, yeah. to the stream. Thank you, Brass Monkey. Salutes yeah. to him. Wolf 1972 with a five dollar hail to the chat and AI as ah oh, thank you uh, kisses and hugs to the Soka sisters all hail to everyone and Godzilla minus one for movie of the year have you seen that yet are you gonna no. see that is it good it's not out in the UK until the fifteenth of December oh, but wow. ev- everybody who I know who has seen it has said it's good really good oh nice. And 15 million budget. 
That's incredible. I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of assume where the 300, 400 million dollar budgets go. Uh, <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but when you have that much money, I'm like, is it really about the movie at this point? Or is this some ransom negotiation where this producer makes this much and you have yeah. to pay this country that it's much? money laundering. That many yeah. yeah, it is money laundering. Yeah. It yeah, 100% okay. is. 15 million is still a lot for yeah. a movie. I'll give you 15 million to make that Oracle movie. I oh. know. It would be sick. I just want, I'm just imagining the stunt fights now because they would be sick. Panic room vibes. She'd have also. Oh, you got to get a head putting somebody and break in the nose. You got to get that in. Oh, man. Yeah. James Gunn, if you're listening, we're in Vancouver. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> you still have our number. <laughs> Trauma, be trauma by the end of that. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> incredible Mr. E with a $5. Three of my favorite nerds talking nerd stuff. Oh, love it. Man. Ladies, thank you for the love on my Alpha Core poster fan art I posted today. Oh, that was oh sick. beautiful. I saw that this morning. We don't just have the best fans in the world. They're, they're talented. They're really sexy talented. and they're funny and they're talented. Yeah. Got them. Uh, as is wonky eyebrow with. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Wonk. Uh, with a two pound says, nerds, hail my lovelies, and as hail Ripperverse. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Psychotic Mongoose gifting a membership to the stream. Thank you, Psychotic Mongoose. Thirio, God of Rage with a 20 dollars says, much love to the Soskers. Congrats on your promotion. Oh, hey, as is alive. No, I'm an AI as. I should really change the name actually to AI as. Yeah. yeah. Uh, much love, brother. I had a rough slash, uh, rough middle slash high school life. I can genuinely say I wouldn't be alive without Spider Man and Thor. We need our heroes, buddy. Bless you. Bless I feel you. the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I gravitated towards the darkness. I gravitated Wait, towards read Batman. Thor, but Taika Waititi said it was the least popular comic book series. That's um, that's weird. I don't know people ever read a Thor comic. I loved Thor. Poor guy. Why would you say that? Nobody asked. Why would you ever like offer that information out? That's like when one actor said he used to suck poo to get his bays bills paid. Oh, Nobody man. asked. He just offered it. Could you imagine being the PR guy, being like, okay, just talk about your TV show. <gasps> no one asked. I th I, my mate, I, I think I'll tell the story, but the chat might have not have heard this one. My mate, uh, his missus, her car battery got duff, got broken. And uh, she said, could you, could you, you know, get it fixed? Because I don't know that. Can you sort it out? He's like, I'll sort it out. So he, he bought her a new uh, battery, 125 quid. A lot of money. That's about uh, probably about 200 Canadian. Yeah. And uh, he fitted it. And then he texted her and said, right, uh, I bought you a new battery and I've fitted it for you. And she sends a message back to him saying, I owe you. And it had uh, emoji face with mouth open and then an eggplant Aww. next to him. And then he texted back, I'd rather have the 125 pounds back, please. Oopsies. You. That's with, funny. With the only fans <laughs> of it all, that it has depreciated in value. It's, just, that's a lot of money, 125 pounds. It is. You know? That's a lot. Like, that's a lot of uh, open mouth eggplant emojis if if you were so inclined. Um, that's overcharging for a blowjob. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say maybe three uh, eggplant emojis, you know, like uh, that would be like minimum payments work it back. Maybe that's uh, like a half hour. <laughs> see how far you get. <laughs> I'm just sorry, writing this down. This uh, Listen, okay. ma'am, I is think. Your car, is your car okay? Just asking. Just asking for a friend. Is your car okay? Just asking what this amount would be. I feel like, you know. <laughs> Just, Let's be fair. Let's just be message fair. me. Message me later if you're battery needs changing. Um, <laughs> Anthony Black Buck with a one month membership says, "As you're alive, AI as." Sorry, I thought you went to as heaven with all the other good ases. Hail all. Have a good week. Can't wait for Yaira. Oh, yeah, thank you, Anthony. There you go. Yaira, uh, winter yeah, yeah, yeah. is coming. Yeah. Winter is coming. Winter is coming, buddy. Psychotic Mongoose has been a member for four months as well. Says, hail the Silverback and hail the Soska sisters. Hail Thank you. 
Uh, Joe Skyver with a five dollar, maybe says greetings to Az and the Saucy Sisters. Going to rewatch Godzilla minus one super soon. Have a lovely stream. Hail to you all as well as the chat. Same to you. I want. I really want to see this now. Hail chat. Weird. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That girl oh. has given us a lot of joy. The yeah. amount of times I go weird, weird, weird. I want her to do it like a heel change and be like, fuck you guys. You told me to say that on the red carpet. Now I'm done. Yeah. Well, I, I think she's quite well into her heel. Uh, to, to be honest with you. I think, uh, I think uh, Rachel needs a baby face to baby pretty face quick. Turn. That's what you need, sweetheart. Oh, it's hard to uh. set up a baby face. The fans never take it. Mm hmm. It has well, to be natural. Hey, uh, yeah, MJF. Mm -hmm. You know, he he was the he was the heel they wanted to cheer. He was the heel they wanted to cheer. Uh it's all dark and gruesome with a five pound. Much love to Jen and Sylvia. Thank you for convincing Catherine Isabel to pour <laughs> fake blood down her anyway. Anytime. Uh, head... <laughs> wait, wait, uh... Oh, there's a there's a scene in American Mary where there's mm. a character who's attracted to the character Catherine Isabel's playing, and he ha and he works at a gentleman's club. Yes, and he's watching one of his girls perform, and he's a little bit bored, and then he fantasizes that it's Catherine Isabel uh -huh. who is doing this little dance, and she pours a glass of beer all over herself, but it turns to blood because yeah. it's a bit of that scarlet letter mm -hmm. it's Macbeth yeah it's guilt. lady Macbeth because he leads her on the path to becoming a murderer so every time he tries to wank he sees the blood on her and he's like ah i'm a bad person i can't jerk off but she dances in this really conservative outfit and uh, <laughs> yeah it's conservative and then she just the tiniest little bit of blood she pours all down here yeah and then she Got starts him. stage mm -hmm. Writing, yeah, it's a hot scene. Very important to the story of the film. Very important. I gotta watch more films. Um, yeah. <laughs> you would like this one. It's weird, weird, weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, head pots to Princess Diana. There oh, you go. Where are you? Where are you? Mm. Where are you? No. Maybe. Maybe. I will deliver them. They'll happen. Okay. CJ with a ten dollars says, "Hail to Az and the Soskers." In both wrestling and movies, we see people get pushed for backstage politics over talent. Grateful to the Ripperverse for bringing in top talent like Chuck Soskers and Mike Barron. Aww. God bless the Ripperverse. Yeah, bless Maybe the Ripperverse. He only so hires right. persons of talent. POTs. POTs. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what they would need more of. POTs. Sorely lacking in other areas, but okay. Oh. Trichondrius with a P with a five dollar says, Oscar sisters. I'd love to hear your opinion about Betty Davis versus Joan Crawford as their femme fatale characters. Ooh, um, do you want me to pick one? Because I'm definitely a Betty sure. Davis, but Joan Crawford was amazing, also. I only Betty what? Davis, I, I relate to because she uh I heard that she what I didn't hear. I know she was very beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> and she was one of those women that uh <clears throat> was very sweet, but she was so pretty that a lot of people were a little bit intimidated to speak to her. So she had a bit of a lonely life. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, oh, she's like this because she's fine, but she's actually just such a genuinely kind, grounded person. And I always empathized for that because I've had people be a little afraid sometimes to speak to me and Sylv and be like, oh, they're probably mean bitches. And I'm like, we might be, but we're really friendly. It's because you look like Morticia. People don't know what how to react to that. It's a, uh, it's a lot to see in real life. It's because I grew up reading comic books and I'm like, I want to be as hot as Rogue one day. So Aww, I just keep at it one of these days. Surely the white great. hair is yeah, 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 yeah. See, yeah. one day, one day. One day. And I <laughs> want to throw down Mae West because she was one of my favorites. She was the whole come up and see me sometime. And she was the one, I believe, who discovered Cary Grant. She saw him. She said, if that can talk, I want it in my movie. Oh, Cash and Carrie. Yeah. Ooh. Is that what she called it, her movie? That, that was that was his nickname in Hollywood, Cash and Carrie. Oh, really? Wow. Because he would, he would marry uh, richer women than him and uh, come out on top. That's good for feminism. Equal the playing field, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, at least they knew what they were getting into. They're like North by Northwest, one of my favorite. <laughs> sorry, sorry, go on, go on. Sorry, sorry. Oh, go on. No, no, no. You, you go, you go. You go. I was just joking about how cool it would be to buy Cary Grant as a husband. Who wouldn't? Oh, I, I wanted to be Cary Grant when I was a kid. Aww. 
I wanted to be him. He was just like this, this, this you know, ultra handsome, ultra debonair, suave, sophisticated guy. North by Northwest, one of my favorite films of all time. Oh, uh, we love bringing up Baby because it's just so fun to watch him <laughs> and Catherine Hepburn with the big uh, wild cat. And she's just so going after him and he's just ridiculous. Oh, in that. she loves him so much. Oh, David. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> and back in the day, there were no cuts. So they would act and sing and dance and fall down a hill yeah. all in one yeah. take. Oh, wow. Gosh. Back when talent, with persons of talent, you had to do that. EOTs. He won't. Who needs them? Weird. <laughs> uh, Jay Fraser 360 with a 10 pound says, Hi, ladies. And as you directed Glenn Jacobs, aka Kane, in See No Evil 2, what is your favorite experience working with him and for WWE Studios? Also, do you have any Vince McMahon or Shawn Michaels story? Ah! Well, my favorite part is when we put the pentagram on the ground and lit the candles to summon Kane out of the fires of hell every morning. Yes. That was, wow. that was my favorite because i was like let's just see if we have enough dark energy stored up to bring him no he was very sweet uh from the moment we met him he's such a he's such a down-to-earth kind yeah. good man and there are so you know when you hear the legends of oh there's some men that just look out for each other and always do the right thing and have a strong moral compass and just get sh that's glenn he's just yeah. such a good man and he never cussed no and uh we would do takes where you were allowed to cuss because with wwe you're not allowed to swear no blasphemy no anything uh it's very opposite of the attitude era and i remember one day i was like glenn just you know again you can say whatever you want but you can't say f and you can't say the c word and he's like, you mean I can't say get off my effing hand, you stupid C word? And I was like, oh. <laughs> and everyone died laughing because he never, never said and we those were like, words. He was so, he was They're, so oh. funny. Like every time he had to murder someone, he would apologize after. Like once he had to call somebody a whore. And between as soon as we said cut, he'd go, I'm so sorry. I would never say that to you. Oh. They put it in the script. And we'd be like, Glenn. and even the girl being murdered she's like it's okay <laughs> like it was so he's also oh, that like, reminds me of perfect blue oh yeah because in perfect blue when she's being assaulted and then like cut and the guy's like and the, but they're still in position and he's like over her and he's like i'm really sorry about this <laughs> <laughs> she's like no no it's fine it's fine I, I get it and then it's like go and it's like then they go it's, it's so it's such a bizarre sort of situation uh, people people forget about um how weird it is to be in those situations like killing somebody when you die or murder someone that's a weird day on set for you it just it's so i mean you feel like you're giddy like it's christmas morning everyone gets so excited um i remember uh originally the movie was supposed to end with both the undertaker mm -hmm. and then they said he was unavailable and it was like he kind of works for you so how did that happen <laughs> But okay. And uh, Glenn was supposed to be set on fire at the very end. Yeah. He was supposed to be put in the furnace. And I was like, that's cool. Because uh, <clears throat> in BC, they created the fire gel that they put on top of you. Yeah. I've been on fire. Sylv's been on fire. on fire. Very comfortable with fire. But the at the time, the studio head was like, you want to call up Vince McMahon and tell him you're going to light one of his top earners on fire and he started to dial and we we're like yeah oh, give, us give it to me <laughs> and he hung up and he's like he hung up immediately <laughs> because he was very scared of vince and vince would do stuff to uh alpha all the men oh yeah i don't know how tony khan runs but backstage but every man uh in the wwe is afraid deathly afraid of i wouldn't vince. say every but yeah they there's no. a fear there's a respect well it's, cm punk's not afraid of anyone it's true <laughs> <laughs> um never got to meet vince personally met Yet. met linda she shook her hand because at the time we were the only chick directors so we were like we're the only di chick directors you've had and the first people you rehired thank you <laughs> we met stephanie but she was with ronda rousey at the time with her like giant entourage so it was just kind of like Hi. and she was like <laughs> they were doing the ice bucket okay, challenge yeah. so both of them poured cold oh. buckets of ice on them and we're like i'll just watch it's cool. i'm i'm there's everybody's like in spandex and beautiful here. Like, I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just pretend i'm supposed to be here um and sean michaels the heartbreak kid is my favorite wrestler and we ended up shut up we did a convention together and he was there and i was so I became like that little girl in puberty watching Attitude Era again. I couldn't go over it. And my security was like, hey. He's just a sexy boy. 
I know, I know. He's he, not your boy toy. He's I know. Okay, so he, he said, Sylvia, if I walk you over, will you go? And I was like, okay. And so he walked me over like I was, this was like two years ago, maybe three, <laughs> like a child. I went over and I was like, hi, Sean. He's like, hi. And I was like, hi. hi. And I'm like, hi. And then, like, he was okay. And I was like, I had a, like a little uh, action figure. I was like, could you sign this for me? And he's like, oh, I saw you. You're telling me, start signing it for me. I was like, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm such a good <laughs> and, then, and he's like, oh, it's better than getting a real job, huh? And I'm like, <laughs> 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 and then he just hands it back to me. And then his handler takes him away and I'm still there. And my handler, I like, I'm a normal person, but there's a few people I'm not normal around. And my security guy's like, are you okay now? He's like, okay. Mm. Like, I'm like, okay. Drag her away. Drag, let's drag let's her. Uh, 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 uh. But he's a sexy boy. He has that power. He has it. <laughs> I know he keeps telling us every time he comes out. Yeah, I know he's the best. Uh, Joe Music 931 with a five dollar. That Wolverine meme with him in bed is me every other night looking at a picture of the Starskers. <laughs> Only difference is they're hotter than Jean Grey. Wow, Aww. yay. Aww. Slightly Thanks. mentally more well, just slightly. Slight, barely. <laughs> I'm dark phoenixing 24 7, though. Have you turned anyone gay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, girls or guys? I know, right? <laughs> Either either, I guess. <laughs> Son of Sean with a two dollar. This is a hot threesome as scoring twins. Nice. Very nice. Axel Braun should direct it next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm actually surprisingly okay with it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I would be honored to be directed Just, by Axel. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was going somewhere completely different than I was. Oh, I was ready I would be to honored do. to be in a threesome yeah, with you too, Al. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot you were there. Sorry. It's fine. You it's killed us for it's real, it's you bastard. All right, let's read this super chat. Yeah. <laughs> Melodic <laughs> method. Oh, it's okay. Somebody put the heating on. <laughs> Who's put the heating on? Turn it off. Come on. <laughs> Melodic method with the ten dollars is Kyle Fish TV did a podcast with a panel of comic creators, and one subject that came up was how kids read comics written for adults. I completely agree. Your brain expands to understand the writing. Correct. Same yes. with TV. Like now, this the, we're making Star Trek for kids. We're making this kids TV show, Star Trek Prodigy. It's already been cancelled, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, well, when I was a kid, I was watching Star Trek. That's what I was actually watching. I wasn't watching Star Trek for kids. I was watching no. Star Trek because that is the thing that, that it fuels the kid's mind. It fuels yeah. your imagination, your development. You, know, you don't want to be, you mentioned it earlier, infantilization. Yeah. Comics are written by infants for infants, essentially. Man, you know, mentally mm -hmm. in, uh, infantile people yeah. for infants. Uh, and no, you know, I'm, I'm reading some wonderful stories as a, as a teenager in, in comics and yeah, you expand your mind expands to to understand the writing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's weird that anybody would promote being in a juvenile place, but if you look at adults now, you, I, I saw it with the term "I don't want an adult." It almost made it look like being adult wasn't something special and a, a right and a responsibility. And now it's like, oh, I want to be a kid forever. It's like, where is that mentality coming from? Well, it's these all of your media is telling you to be an infant. Mm. I also, I also think the best art is something you can re-experience in your life. Who Framed Roger yeah. Rabbit is my favorite fucking movie. And when I watched it, I just liked Roger. Yeah. And then I got older and I was like, oh, man, this is about extortion and alcoholism and murder. Oh, dear. And then I became even older and I was like, oh, it's about prejudice and racism. Wow. But as a child, I could watch it. I just thought Jessica was pretty. I didn't yeah. think there was anything sexual happening with the patty cake. I just thought, whatever. No, uh, we just, I mean, as a young boy, when that came out, I just saw a huge pair of tits. <laughs> Where? On, on Roger Rabbit. <laughs> Roger, nice rack. <laughs> he did have a good one, didn't he? He did have a great rack, didn't he? DB with the two pounds says, sisters, can you give us a silverback raw, please? Oh, that's cute. That's a, like a monkey, right? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, what is that? What is a so silverback it, roar? It's kind of like a, like a, oh, like, oh, right? <laughs> I think for two bucks, that'll do. I do. You know. oh, I'm also afraid of monkeys, DB. I, it's my one fear. <clears throat> 
Yeah, they're, monkeys. They're like ultra powerful, people. you know. Monkeys they just rip scary. your arms off and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They put their fists up your organs in the bum bum region and yank it out and they take your genitals off. They're, they're, what, Google monkey attacks for no, I don't, no, I don't. Okay. for a scarring experience. Thank you, TV. <laughs> <laughs> that went play. You see, this is what happens when you got horror directors and you just get a super chat like that. That's where it can go. <laughs> just yank the fucking shit out of you. That's 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 where oh, we're going with that one. Good dad. Viking oh. Viking Peach Bump with the five dollars RIP as. Lest we forget as. Yeah. Lest we forget. Was a Gone but man. not forgotten. Hopefully. <laughs> Vital Morpheus with a ten dollar. Curious to hear the top five favorite horror directors of the Soskas. Ooh. Not the Soskas. Uh, I can't wait uh, to see the horror spin you ladies will put on Yaira. Ah! Wait till you see who she fights. Wait till you... <laughs> Yaira is a character who was granted permission to kill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> from her origin, and let's just say uh, it's satisfying. It's so satisfying. Mm. Yeah, top five horror directors. Uh, we'll share. Okay. Um, David Cronenberg, Mary Heron, Eli, Eli Roth, Eli Roth, uh, Takashi Miike, Takashi Miike, Takashi Miike, definitely. Oh, George the, Romero, George Romero. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot in there. I really like Sion Sono as well. If you haven't seen his uh, movies, they're fucking nuts. Uh, Suicide. Club is his circle. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Oh, so disturbing. Uh, I fell in love with the Roly Taranishi who plays Genesis in there, you know, who uh <laughs> he plays that song Suicide Kiss with the bags and the stabbing. It's in the torture sex room, guys. You remember uh, that part. Welcome to my pleasure room, right? Oh, so <laughs> it's good. It's good. I tracked him down and he did a little video clip for us. Yeah. Um. Who else is there? I guess I feel like David Fincher is a horror director to an extent because I love Seven so much. I mean, mm -hmm. is it you Gone get, Girl? You gave uh, like three bonus hole answers. I gave some bonuses. Uh, Jennifer Lynch is great. Uh, oh, David Lynch. David Lynch is yeah, great. Yeah. Oh. David Cronenberg's children are both directing. Brandon Cronenberg's movies are great. Caitlin Cronenberg's movies coming out right now, but she did a short film called The Death of David Cronenberg, starring her dad with a corpse of himself. I, it's just cool. It's just, I'm like, I don't know. If that's not your thing, maybe not, but it's existentialism done by horror greats. So. I like Gaspar No too. If you want to see some of the most fucked up movies ever, uh, go out, take some acid and watch a Gaspar No movie. You'll you'll change. Oh, and Tom <laughs> Six, the human centipede guy. He is so cool. I love that he actually makes horror that you get too scared to talk a about. lot of these people we know and they're really nice yes like you'd never think that james wants like i'm a bit afraid of blood i'm like you the saw guy <laughs> and he said saw one very little blood yeah i like him too sorry mm -hmm. i like them all i and like I, them I all. like a lot of them <laughs> oh wait and i like her oh hey hey, this one's hey. Good. hey nepotism <laughs> 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 After that Primal Rage Black Widow No Restraints play brought uh, brought out of me, can't wait to see what Yaira has in store. Great job. Thank couple you. Of, of, she uh, she gets shit done. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think yes. Yaira would have been censored four times in that book very strongly. <laughs> there was one thing that Marvel said we're not allowed to do, and we did it, and Yaira won. And instead hey. of... Marvel saying no, no, no. Eric said yes, yes, yes to everything. If you're gonna read Yahweh with a youngster, read it first. Well, I don't know what it is, honestly. I don't know what it is, but I, I do believe you have told me that you thought Eric was gonna go no. Yeah, yeah. And then Eric was just like, oh no, go yeah, do it. He was. We put it. We put something right at the beginning. We're like, because you you put things in, and you're like, oh, this would be cool, but I he probably wouldn't let that happen. And he loved it. He actually pushed us to just do it's weird because you're usually asking for permission in the creative field so to work with eric who's like this is cool this would also be cool and do this because that's cool and yeah that's great and you're like i think i only got compliments and like a few tweaks for things to make sense 
it sounds like this guy likes what we're doing. Like it's Yaira was allowed to have so much personality. Yeah. There was Black Widow. We had to like, there were moments where we had to be like, no, she, in, in this issue, she did this. So she's allowed to like, or no, she, she is this person. She would do this. And then be like, okay, fine. You can do it. Yeah. Well, as, a, as a gentleman called Philip Brooks oh. once said, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Tell me when I'm telling lies. I love him. <laughs> I love him. He's, I don't think he can tell a lie because I've no. worked and, you know, I've worked with him a few times. Uh, and as he was tortured on our set, he had a, he had to go through a, a window with explosives and then do a coronated fight. And it was crazy. And everybody was like, oh shit, we did the explosives thing before the talking later on. So he's might have glass rip his face open. <laughs> Can you check if he's okay? And everyone was scared because it's CM Punk. And I'm like, okay, I'll go over. And I'm like, hey, Bill. And he's like, hey. And I'm like, uh, everyone's kind of nervous about today. And he's like, yeah, me too. And I was like, oh, because of the explosives? He's like, nah. He's like, I just don't want to screw up the talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has the best attitude in the world. I, I just laugh when people are like, well, he's got an attitude problem. I'm like, Maybe. An independent film set is no glamorous situation, let me tell you. No. Maybe on a film or TV show where they're just shitting away money, but it's the energy of if we don't get this, it has to be cut out of the movie yeah. and we have to rework everything. So please do not fuck this moment up. And there's a lot of pressure for Phil. They don't even give him a lot of buffer time. It's not like he was chilling there for a week. It was like you get in you one day, in. you work, and then you're out immediately and he is so kind so gracious anytime he found out someone was a cm punk fan and they were afraid to go over to him he's like take me over and yeah he we just did talk we did a whole round and also cm punk's just like glenn because we had him say something horrible to this woman and every cut he would be like i'm sorry i don't feel that way i would never talk to a girl like this he's like why is my guy doing this and at one point she's like it, it's okay my character is harassed girls so i had a feeling you were gonna say something. <laughs> <laughs> it's her only job is to have him say disgusting things and he's apologizing like um, i need that, to hire one <laughs> just to stand there and then every so often i just turn and abuse them and then yes. when people start getting at me I go no that's harassed girl <laughs> <laughs> Right? Uh, it happens. She's like, doing her job, guys. That's her yeah. job. Doing her job. <laughs> it's because she gets paid for. It's her job. <laughs> you made me a fucking sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, his ad lib line, I think, was the funniest diss. He called her a Jersey Six, and everyone <laughs> died. That man is. Wow. And then he really apologized and was like, you know, <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> Well, he's managed to, uh, he's married to AJ, so I can understand uh, that, you know, she's, uh, uh, she's, she's a little away. cutie. Mm. Yeah, she was on our movie too. God, she's so hot and nice. They're both hardcore straight edge. So we had her drinking and doing pretend cocaine and it was so funny. <laughs> she's like, how do you think I, how do you do this? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't, I just don't get it. What is this? It's a pile of coke. Okay. <laughs> sure, but. Uh, DB with the two pounds says, as can we get a retro game stream, oh, please? Maybe, maybe, nice. maybe, maybe. Uh, I'll have to pick a pick one that works on modern. Uh, I mean, I could, we'll see. We will see. A strong maybe. Yeah, it's a, it's a strong might. <laughs> uh, Kin with a five gifted. Thank you. Kin, appreciate that. Vito Prashad with a $10 says, as in heaven. After getting choked out by Yaira's thighs, what a way to go. That's Hot. not a bad way to die. Hi, Vito. Hi. I'm okay with that. I'm okay Good with that, you. dude. You know? There are certain ways that uh, you want to die and you don't want to die. I'm more than happy to die <laughs> that way. <laughs> are you ready to die? Yeah, cold, coldest blood runs through my veins, mate. <laughs> the Raven and the Writing Desk has been a member for three months. Thank you. Nicely done, Ethan. That is uh, Robert's $300. Like I said, Robert, yeah! I've got, I've got an idea. Robert, 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 Robert. Robert. Sorry. <laughs> got an idea. As I said, I'll message you later with it, Robert. Uh, I think I think you'll get your approval. Uh, Greenhead Anti-Liberal with two. There's this uh, members. Uh, membership for eight months says, I'm behind and catching up, but I have been saying for decades, yes. Well, since I was a, I think it's the yes. 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 
Yes. That Western shows slash cartoon treats kids like they're stupid. They yeah. do. And never, never, yeah. Kid, give you got to give kids credit, man. A lot smarter than you think. Very, very manipulative the kids. They learn that fucking shit very early on. Uh, it's why I started reading manga and watching anime. This is why I love what is being done with the Ripperverse, Epicverse, etc. Kids aren't stupid. Correct. Absolutely correct. That's uh, awesome because also you're raising smart kids. I read Stephen King novels under 10 and it forced me to know how to read and no language. It was tough to find the F word in my thesaurus, but... <laughs> 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 I want to see kids who grew up reading Yaira when they're like 15 be like I read this when I was 10 you'll know who they are because they'll be these shredded like goddess women walking <laughs> around wearing almost no clothing loving life and doing whatever the fuck they oh, want oh man if I could be a part of that happening oof, oof. you're never too young <laughs> Connor with a $20 thank you as for having the Soskas on you're all awesome Jen and Sylvia Thank you for telling me to follow my stupid fucking dreams as a screenwriter. Best advice. Hope you can go to Monster Mania Con again sometime. Damn right. And I hope I can see your movie at some point, Connor. You finish it and I'll bring the popcorn. Robert Rodriguez, yeah. deal for you. There you go. Uh, DS with a five euro. Have you ladies and as seen Perfect Blue? It's one of the best anime movies ever. Highly recommend One Piece is... Not very good after Albasta. <clears throat> you know what I find every time, and maybe every One Piece fan feels this, but they get to a new area and I'm stoked and I'm really excited. But then the battles go on so long and they lose for so long. And then either Nami or Robin will get kidnapped. And I'm like, bitch. Like, especially Nami. I'm like, you were so difficult before you were on our team. <laughs> Don't, I love her. No, I love her. But every time we're like about to do something, she's like, mm, I got hands all over you. And I'm like, nah, come on, Robin. Every time something's like, Nico, Robin, get them, get them, get them. And it's like already she's kidnapped. I'm like, I feel like she's like a little bookish. She's like, I could use my powers, but I just won't. She should be the first one doing anything anytime. But yeah, okay, yeah. I will say that I'm going to stick with it because now it's like, I think we're si 654. Yeah, we've almost caught up. No, we're like a little bit over half, aren't we? It's... No, because it's 1,092, 93, 94, 95, 96. I don't know. Chat, you know. <laughs> we're on our way to getting the one piece. I mean, wow. We the pirates. <laughs> and we do like Perfect Blue. Yeah, it, this perfect. this was going to be a Perfect Blue stream and then thought just expand it. Just expand it onto uh, to all sorts because as you can see, it kind of goes everywhere and that's awesome. Hot. Uh, hot. Hot. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> Hometown Hero with a $2. On the topic of anime, check out Ergo Proxy. So good. Nice. It mm. sounds a little sexy. I'm into it. Also, I'm petting Diana right now. Pets are being Yee. delivered. Pets are being delivered. She's wet. She ran outside and came in. She's happy. <laughs> oh. Hi, Princess Diana. Want to see her? You 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 see her? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Kung Fu Hot Dog with a six month membership says Can the Sausage Sisters with the Fang? Can the Sausage Sisters with the Fangs? Jen? Uh, visit my place and turn me into a vampire, please. Accept my invitation. Love you too, as well. You invited me, so I'll be there to bite you shortly after the wow. Ends. Yeah, I mean, that's oh, an invitation, yeah. Invitation, man. Hi. That's it. Dead, it's dead. Like a side gig. You're dead. She might just drain you, man. <laughs> uh, Gorbuzz with a 10 pound says a decent anime in recent mm. days is Freisen, oh. uh, Beyond Journey's End. Nice. Ooh. Are these all Bowden? on Funimation, Crunchyroll? Chat. Mm, yes, no. I can find them. It'll be on the Pirate Bay for sure. <laughs> yeah, it'll be. Uh, it, no, what you say is I can go watch it with my friend Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, GJJ has been a member for 22 months. Thank you, nice. GJJ. Good commitment. Nice, it's a heck of a commitment. And I've had relationships last less than that. Uh, Aitken with an eight month uh, Australian says, I'm geeking out here. I'm so happy they've started cloning beautiful geeky women. There's Aww. hope for the future uh, after all. There you go. Aww. 
Thank you. Apart It'll from... be like Jurassic Park. We'll just keep cloning me and Jen. Well, I was going to say you think... different continents. Aiken, these are the OGs. <laughs> They're not even clone, man. These are this is this is ground fucking zero. Man. Yeah, this is okay, sure. just saying. <laughs> Uh, Deflect 15 with a $20 says One Piece has taken over from Dragon Ball as my favorite anime. I don't read manga uh, of all time. And I loved Dragon Ball. OP has uh, great pacing, great character tropes, great power systems, great world building, and great humor. Yeah, it really does. I miss that Sanji isn't more of a slut in the live action. Yeah. Because everyone has that one friend that's like uh, Dan from Reanimator. Like you see a chick and it's like, oh, that's it. You'll never see him again. It's <laughs> funny though. It's, it's, it's funny. I always think, man, I would love to be on the One Piece crew so I could be like, Sanji, I Sanji, need a drink. We're hungry. <laughs> or like Brooke, here's my panties. A little song, please. A leather song. <laughs> <here's the> panties. <laughs> These aren't unreasonable requests. No. No, it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Eric Brown has been a member for five. Thank you, Eric. Yay. Guy Incognito with a fitty Canadian says happy what? holidays and season greetings to you as an Asoskas. Here's a 50 and 50. Uh, 50 for the channel and 50 gifted. Oh my God, he just did 50 gifted subs afterwards. Wow! Wow, wow, wow. Fucking A! Fucking A! Woo. I'm tired of the PC crap, so Merry fucking Christmas to all you nerds, dweebs, and geeks. And there it is. Yeah! Guy Incognito's 50 gifted. Wow! Thank wow, you. wow, wow, wow. I think, Great Guy, convenient. correct me if I'm wrong here. Correct me if I'm wrong here. When Guy first started coming into the stream, I think Guy wasn't wasn't particularly happy with me. Uh, not in this stream, but in when, in when he first started coming in. And I, I think I think might have won him over over time. Tell me if I'm wrong, Guy. Tell me if I'm I'm wrong. But I think that was that's the the law between Guy and me. Aww, you're pretty charming as yeah you win him over first you're so i i first came across you with the pronouns thing and where everyone was like man what's going on i was like this has to be my friend this, is <laughs> this has to be my friend i do want to have a conversation and manipulate a friendship out of this yeah. man oh, and, okay, here I got you. <laughs> and here we are and then and here we are Fucking pronoun! Okay, let's go. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. As did the lane. Did the thing! Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you're far from boring, so you're not gonna get one of them. Uh, lean back, have a snack, take a nap with a two-month thank you. That's and Andy Radar. Yeah. It is a good name. Andy Radar with a 30-month membership. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Lee Kindler with a five dollars says my crushes were Jennifer Conley, oh, Deborah nice. Foreman, and Kathy Long. Nice taste. Jennifer Conley in Dark City is so ridiculously oh. hot. Yeah, insanity. She she's uh yeah, insanely yeah. beautiful one. Yeah, and what, what was that other one? Um the really depressing drug one. Oh, oh uh, Requiem. Uh, Requiem. <laughs> she's hot in Requiem, but it's a bit of a downer. Depends on what you're into. Depends if you're into double anal. You know? Yeah, I got banned for that in Canada for a few months. <laughs> we got it back! Yay! We got it back! <laughs> I've seen that film once. I will never see it again. Not because it's not good. It's an amazing film. But holy shit, it is a... It is a downer. Yeah, it's a Soul oh, yeah. Destroyer. It, yeah, it's a... It's a, it's a, Yeah, Soul Destroyer. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's the only reason. But it's it was a fantastic film. But I can't... Give what you want me to give to watch that again. <laughs> it's horrible. That scene where she's in the red dress doing the speech, uh, the camera shakes and the director was so pissed off. And then he went over to the cameraman and saw he was crying. And that was the reason the camera shaked. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. I've Aww. seen it twice. The first time I saw it, I didn't see that Jared Leto stole the TV and was a piece of shit. So I was sad for his arm. But the second time I was like, fuck you treating your mom that way. <laughs> Wait till your arm comes off, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking junky ass. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Crimson Shadow with a 10 pound says, Hi, Az and Saskas. I hope you're having a good day. 
My mates and I are going to see Die Hard again and then Godzilla minus one later this month. Oh, nice. Merry Christmas to the three of you and the chat. Merry Christmas. And, oh, I thought it was a pair of handcuffs for me. I was like, that's a bit kinky. No, it just to be it. To, to, uh, oh, cheers. Uh, yeah, cheers. 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 No. Cheers. Cheers. Um, chin, chin, old bean. <laughs> uh, a little bit of water for us there. Uh, AJH Productions with a $5. Got Soska's Black Widow's issues two to four today. Oh, Direct this to the Hoos Fundaz. Also, can't believe CM Punk is back in WWE. What's everyone's thoughts? You go. Wow. Uh, I, I I hope I still get invited to AEW events, but I think that... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do think that uh, I always questioned why Vince McMahon was the way that he was. And from an outsider perspective, I'm like, this guy is way, way, way too harsh. But I have a Rottweiler now, and I've learned something called firm but fair. Firm but fair. Yeah. And I think uh, that there wasn't enough structure over there. And I mm. know more than I'll say on this stream about how the WWE treated uh, AJ and Phil. And uh, I'm shocked that they would go back. But that only means that things that happened in the AEW were worse. <laughs> And knowing what I know about what happened before, I'm like, there must have been, it must, because <clears throat> Phil doesn't back, he doesn't quit on things. He doesn't back away from things. He is, he is a guy who will tell you that you're fucking wrong and to get your shit together and to fuck off. To your face. To your face, which is a, a gentlemanly thing. And I think there's a lot mm -hmm. of ass kissers in the world and they're really put off by that. But if yeah. you do something stupid, I think life would be better if people said, you know what? Fuck off. Yeah, exactly. So someone should check on hell because I think it's frozen over. <laughs> Just in time for Christmas, we can go ice skating on hell. I can't believe that he's back at the WWE, but I have a good feeling that AJ is not far behind. Well, I love CM Punk. I always will. And he's one of the best human beings ever. I remember when he told me he would never go back to wrestling when we worked together. And I was like, ah! And then everyone is talking about AEW and I texted him and he sent me an emoji with sunglasses like, oh, man, I was like, again, you can't lie. You're telling me you're coming back. And then when this was happening, I got really excited. I didn't think he was coming back, though. No, no I, I didn't. Honestly, I, did, I honestly didn't. We were talking. Spoiler alert. We're talking about the next project that the three of us are going to do together with Phil. I didn't know that was that was his next future. and. Uh, when it happened, I was so happy. He's so happy. Wrestlers that I know are like so happy. It's like <laughs> it's like one of the favorite sons left the house because of a fight with dad. And you're like, dad, you ruined the whole family. <laughs> no one will ever love us again. And then he comes back and you're like, yay, we can have Christmas again. Phil, <laughs> Phil came home. Yay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the opposite of WrestleMania 30 yeah. for me. It was like an impossible dream that came true. And I'm so grateful that he's back. And I will say that Phil will be making stuff with us and perhaps someone else who writes for the Ripperverse. Perhaps. Perhaps. Perhaps there's Spoiler. something already in the works. But I love Phil. I love wrestling. And I will tell you, kids... Spoiler alert. Uh, if you see wrestlers saying they hate each other in the news, they're, don't take it... Just oh, remember yeah, that it could it's all be a, a word. game. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's not yeah. real. It's all a game. So there was a certain wrestler, I won't even say who, that they're like, oh, he's so mad that CM Punk is back. I'm like, he's not, guys. They've been working on the angles for months. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that you guys are like, oh, feels so mean, and there's a morality class. Guys, I love that you believe in Santa Claus. Keep believing. The amount of times people come over to me and they're like, Phil was going to fight this guy. I was like, Phil was going to fight someone in his time off? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. Not that, no, we're not allowed to call him Tyler Black anymore. It's Seth Rollins we've got to call him now, isn't it? Seth ah, I still remember when we was half blonde, half black hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shield. yeah. I still call them all the shield guys. I'm like, you're still trying to put over the shield. I will never like them. I know. Never. I, I love the shield. I actually really like I, well, really? I was a big uh, big uh, Moxley fan. Oh, oh, well, he's perfect. He's, he's lovely. I would call Roman Reigns a porn star Undertaker. Like he's <laughs> the Undertaker. Because I didn't see Undertaker for a while. And when I first saw him, I was like, oh my God, he got so much work done. It was so funny. <laughs> So when you work for the company, you can actually, you can either watch in the, the crowd or you can go backstage where they're having catering and stuff. And that was one of our favorites to do. And I remember we were watching an event 
Goldust was on one side and Kane was another side and we were all eating, just being normal people. And Roman Reigns goes up and Jen starts calling him slutty he porn. He starts fighting against Randy Orton and they're both very sexual looking guys pressing each other down. Oh my God. When Roman pins the guy, he flicks his stripper hair back. So, she <laughs> talks, uh, so I'm giving my own play by play of what's happening. Cause we always wanted to be announcers and, and gold is relate. cool. Gold dust is cool. You can say any crazy shit around him. Gold dust is laughing his ass off. Cause it's good stuff. And Glenn is stopping eating and he's getting quieter and quieter. And like, you can see this. And he's saying, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Jen. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And no, I, think he's, I thought it was a, joke he was like he <laughs> being like golly jen and he's like gosh he's like jen you don't talk like that when i'm wrestling do you and i said never yes. have i ever while you and undertaker my favorite wrestler were wrestling have i ever said anything of a sexual nature glenn not about you not ever and then me her and gold has just died laughing and glenn's just like He's the diva's favorite demon because he doesn't want it. Girls want to give him attention. He's a nice married man. How, how, how tall is Glenn? Like fucking six foot ten? He's seven. He's, he's, seven Glenn, he's like, he's huge. He's like, he's six. Oh, wait, let's see. He's like six something. I know Big Show is seven. Big Show's seven. And he was, no, I don't know his weight anymore because he's slimmed. Yeah, he's ripped now. He was half a ton before, but I think he's like three something lower fours. Yeah, it's funny because we only work with giant wrestlers. So whenever somebody's like, they're big, I'm like, well, I'm Hobbit size. Everyone's big know. to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Aww. Uh, Amagil with a 20 Canadian says, uh, thank you, as I don't always agree with you, but watch you because you're always honest. To the sisters, great to see fellow Canadians get more involved with Ripper. Can you help out by connecting me with a comic artist? Oh, yeah. Oh. Are you looking for a comic artist for your own thing? Hit us up on Twitter with your thing, and then we'll post it out and be like, hey, are you a comic artist? Let's looking for a script? Let's match make it happen. Matchmaker, matchmaker. Mm. all of your stupid fucking dreams though keep yeah. at it i mean i thought i'd be working for marvel and i failed forward and had an even better job where i'm yeah. treated paid better oh my gosh i'm involved in my own work all the way through it's weird that's a lot weird weird weird, weird. <laughs> <laughs> gray ghost with a 20 dollar shout out to the Saskia sisters to, that, that nearly made sense. Shout out to the Soska sisters. Easy for me to say, literation. <laughs> I only just learned about them during the Ice and Wong campaign and slowly going through their works. Kind of hard not to love Jen and Sylvia and their energy. I will simp hard umt true. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Grey Ghost. Thank you for watching. We promise not to let you down. We love you. Wow. Uh, I, I've got no doubt you will not. Uh, Isaac Desomo. <laughs> what up, Isaac? Membership. Thank you. Apologies if I have butchered your uh, surname there. Wild Hunter with a two pound says, Soska's do Zatanna. I I'd watch that. Yes. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm texting hello. Axel. I'm texting Axel. <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> we had a lot of really great ideas for her because uh, we're nice Catholic girls. We've studied the occult and yeah. other like magic and Crowley and all that cool stuff. And I will say that we took every good idea that we were going to put into her and put it into we, the Ripiverse. Yeah. And we might be eventually writing <laughs> other people somebody <laughs> said they hope that we're writing and my answer is yes oh no it's the oh, no! Ah! Ah. andrew's in the chat just ripping his hair out he's like shut up twins shut up he's like i gave that <laughs> nice nda message <laughs> <Here we are. laughs> eternia twin with a ten dollars his first <laughs> time as oh giggity Love mm -hmm. Jen and Sylvia. Can't wait to read Yaira. Their work is awesome and being the oldest by one minute. Love seeing their relationship and enthusiasm oh. as Watch American Mary. I'm going to have to. Oh, you like to. it. It's sexy, but a little scary. John Landis said it was too creepy for him, which was a career highlight for me. Really? I know, right? Wow. <laughs> I know. Holy shit. Have you I seen? Know. Fucking hell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Crow with a uh, nine month membership said the Saska sisters, the only time they, them pronouns are appropriate. <laughs> yes, 
<laughs> Welcome to the Because team. it's plural. It's the plural, yeah. belongs to twins. Just another part of twin culture. We're an unrecognized visual minority. We one, are. One day it'll be our turn and we're like, yeah, twins and everything. We've oh. had a, like, Dr. Mengele, like, we've had a, we've had a hard, oh. t- we've had a hard go. <laughs> Identical twins have had a hard go. We have. I ain't gonna go there. <laughs> um, Wolfreed Snake with a membership has joined at the membership level. Thank you, dude. Nice. Appreciate you, Wolverine. Nick is one of my Snicked. favorite comic book sounds. <laughs> Davy Verse with a 10 pound says, I get it. I am an intimidated slash starstruck by uh, starstruck by you guys, but I'm gonna shoot my shot and shill. Just dropped my book, Mafioso Samurai, this morning. P.S. Gift, uh, gifted my grandma a review copy. She loved it. I hope so. She's your grandma. But uh, you can get it on Amazon uh, chat. So uh, if you go to Amazon and put Mafioso Samurai into Amazon, uh, it should bring it up for you. Get it, Mafioso Samurai. We got to hunt luck, that baby. down. That sounds awesome. That's a great mix. Yeah. Uh-huh. Could you imagine you're doing mob stuff and they just take out a katana? <laughs> Hi, you need to watch uh, Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to love it, aren't I? Particularly when one character is called Vicious. Oh. Not... Called it that for a reason. Good reason. Oh, man. Uh, next, chat, next chat. Force Ghost Marty with a five pound says, I wondered what it was like working with former oh. Superman Dean Kane. In vendetta for the Hoos fund as I will have to correct you. He is a current Superman in my heart. <laughs> he is he is a great man. Uh, he's my God. Uh Dean Kane, if you say something to him, he will come to your face <laughs> and have a conversation. <laughs> have a conversation like a with you about it. He doesn't, he is also one of the only actors who has a lot of power because of his name and stuff. And he uses that power to help the directors get what they want. Uh, originally, Vendetta had a really bad ending. And I wrote an ending, which is the ending in the film. And I really liked it. And Dean came up to me one day and said, ah, this ending isn't working. You know what should work. And he pitched me my ending. And I was like, Dean, you read my script? And he said, no. And I said, well, there's a- another script that I wrote with like some more emotional stuff. And he's like, oh. Well, tell me everything that was taken out, and I'll say I want all of that back in, and then we'll just do it. Which is exactly what Kane did with the script for See No Evil too. He, yeah, it's so great when you have like a, an actor on your side. Dean is way cooler than he has any right to be. Like there was a Friday, our first week, he bought the entire crew pizza. Like he would go to craft services and bring people sandwiches. He was so fun to work with and it was so fun to get him to be evil. And uh, (laughs) Vendetta was our Punisher versus uh, the Kingpin movie. We had the big show playing a Kingpin X cop character and Dean was this cop that got disillusioned and became a murderer. And it was so fun directing him. And I remember telling him like, Dean, we're kind of like the Punisher. So can you growl? Like when you talk, can you like drop your voice and growl all sexy? And if you notice that, he does that a lot now in his other stuff. And I was like, oh, he did the voice trick. Now he's always growling and sexy. And I was like, he just was like, oh, I can be even sexier. Okay, I'm going to use this power. (laughs) He is very sexy and very charming. One of the actors uh, was named Michael Eklund. And I worked with him a lot. And he was in the makeup trailer. And I gave him a kiss on the cheek. Hello. And uh, I... I was there was a there was a thing that the studio was saying that we weren't allowed to hug or kiss any of our cast or crew because we hug everyone. We hug everybody. And if you do something really good, you get a little kiss. And the guys were like, I will sign a petition, I will walk off. And after I need the kisses and the hugs. We're not gonna yeah. let the girls not be able to do that anymore. And Dean said, I actually have a problem. That guy's number three on the call sheet. I like you're fine, whatever, but I'm number one. I haven't gotten one kiss. I've been oh. here since day one, no kiss. And I went over and I gave him a kiss on the lips. And then he was like, I got kissed on the mouth. Suck it, everyone. And I got a kiss <laughs> from Dean at the beginning of every day <laughs> and at the end of every night. And that was it was so wow. cute. We he, a, it was a little like, hi, I'm getting to kiss hello, a movie star. He was such a pro on the last day. He's like, I don't think we're going to do a full day. I was like, what? I was mm-hmm. like, but we have all this shit to get through. And he's like, it's going to be half day. 
And it was all dialogue, all Dean. He killed it so hard. We had a half day, and then we got a box of cigars and a a bottle of scotch for the crew, and we were smoking cigars and drinking scotch, putting the gear away. And I was like, this is the coolest thing with this guy. And, of course, Dean was there with his son, and he saw us. He was like, that's great. I'm going to leave, but thank you so much for this great experience, and thank you for having me on set. It was like, yeah, it was very cool. If you ever go see Dean at a convention, do it and tell him the twins say hi. Yeah, tell him the twins said hi. That could take on a whole new meaning if it's one of our female viewers. <laughs> if he might be like, which set? But which, yeah, he, which set? He, <laughs> okay. Weird. Uh, no, I follow Dean Kane uh, on socials. He, he's, he comes across as a real, real good, genuine guy. Yes. Yeah, he's a good uh, guy. We're trying, to, we're trying to work out getting him on FNT. We'll see. Oh, we oh. We'll ask him. We, we could can. ask. Yeah, I, th- I think we've got some inroads going. We'll see. We'll, I don't know. I don't want to tread on anyone's toes here. All right, I won't. Uh, <laughs> but we're friends and I could yeah, if, if we need, though. Yeah, if we need. Yeah, yeah okay. Aiken <laughs> eight with the three uh, Australians says, Hi, ladies, alien or aliens or both? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I would say alien. I love both of them, but uh, I had a, a very good mother daughter moment watching the first alien. I used to watch horror movies with my mom. So I didn't get scared. She explained stuff to me. It was this weird thing that parents used to do. Mm. Anyways, it was the end of the movie and the alien showed up and I got really scared and I wanted the movie to get turned off because I didn't want to see Ripley die. And my mom said something she did just flippantly, but it changed my life. She said, oh, well, Ripley never dies. She's the hero. And I was like, what? She always wins. And then I, it just changed my life because I would another alien movie would come on. People would be like, oh, I'm scared. I'm like Ripley's the hero. So like she always wins. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and that. it just it just changed my mind. She was she had a cat. She was in her underwear. She beat the alien. Coolest chick ever. You mean a chick in space with a cat can work? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Sorry. I had no idea, dude. That's so true. My answer would be aliens only for the Hollywood story that when Buddy went in to pitch the movie, he wrote alien on the whiteboard. James Cameron is Buddy, by the way, in this story. Well, we're Canadian. By by Buddy, you should be able to know which Buddy I'm talking about, eh? Anyway. All right. So he goes and he puts alien on the board. (laughs) Then he puts aliens. And then he turns the S into a dollar sign, and that was the pitch, and he got the movie. Nice. Clever girl. Yeah, yeah clever girl. Clever girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, best name I can think of with a $5. As long uh, as a longtime Punisher fan, No Restraints Play made my bitter, cold heart smile. Can't recommend it enough. You got to yeah, you gotta, you gotta go read it, folks. Trust me, if you read that before, you, before Yara comes out, you can get yourself prepared, you know what I mean? Oh, what a compliment. Uh, Richard Curtis with a £10 says, Not the same as Roger Rabbit, but I recently rewatched watched uh, Alligator. Uh, when I was young, I loved it for the gore, but on rewatching, I hadn't appreciated how great Robert Foster's and Robin Riker are. There you go. Uh, Very action. similar to Roger Rabbit. Very. <laughs> I can't tell them apart. But there you go. I am very much an uh, animalist uh, in my bigotry. Uh, action com with a $2. Practical effects or CGI, in camera or post? Mm. I'm a practical uh, in camera girl, except I will tell you if I'm shooting a crowd of people. In a movie. If I'm shooting up a crowd of people. Yeah. Uh, in a movie? Squid... Why would you do that? In a movie! In a movie. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but uh, in Vendetta, uh, that's the first time that I tried. There is a part where Dean charges at Big Show and there's a riot going off. And we set up all the, the practical squibs to go off because he there's crosses. There's guys that get shot in the way. Squibs are little explosives that make the blood come out. In yeah, movies. they're really cool. Um, but they don't always go off. <laughs> and when they go off, sometimes the person has changed. And then you have to change all their clothes. You have to reset everything. It's a fucking nightmare. And it's for something that's maybe 
two, three, four frames long. So that's the only time I use visual effects, uh, if I can spare it. I think visual effects is like cosmetic surgery. Once you know it's there, it's too much. Yeah. yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> there's some stuff like uh, I ha I'm very lucky to be working with a, a visual effects generalist, which means he knows how to do everything, plus create the technology to do visual effects. And we have a NDA thing we're working on. NDA. And the thing he's creating doesn't exist in, well, it exists in nature, but not in the way it should. Okay. No, it's nice right, that you okay. Screen of that. <laughs> All right. So a thing with the visual All effects. All righty. A thing with a thing with a thing with a thing. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Stay Hill with a five pound says, hi, Sasuke sisters. Hi. Uh, first came across you guys' work when CM Punk spoke glowingly about you a few years ago. Good Keep guy. it up and hail the Ripperverse. There you oh, go. Hail Ripperverse. I'll thank Phil next time I see him. I'll give him a hug. I'll be that's for the hill. <laughs> Drake and Eagle with a two dollar says, "What do y'all think of Bubba Hotep?" Oh, I love Bruce Campbell. Yeah, he's he's my favorite human being in the world. I would watch him just sit there and read the phone book. <laughs> yeah, I, it's funny because he was such because of Ash versus Evil Dead. Nobody ever wants to see him play anything else, and he's so good at everything else. Like. He's probably one of, other than Tobey Maguire, my favorite part of the Spider-Man series because every time he's there, he's something else. And then when I heard Sam Raimi wanted to make him Mysterio, my heart died because I was like, that's such a good idea. Oh, would have made, yeah, would have, yeah, would have start made some little connective sense as well. Yeah, I don't know. I had it all. Uh, Brando the Jedi with a membership for month says, y'all bring sunshine to my day. Aww. I appreciate more than you know. Much love, my oh, people. No. Uh, same to you, dude. Good Thank love, you, man. Brando. We love you back. Star Trek of 58 with a 10 Australian says, Hey, as in Saskas, I nearly saw a horror movie the other day. I nearly went to see the Marvels. Going <laughs> <laughs> to a Christmas movie instead. Die hard. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Uh, nice. Going to Godzilla, too. Nice. Both. Uh, yeah, yeah. Die hard is a Christmas movie. Yeah. I'll, fight you, I'll fight you to the death for that one. Absolutely. Uh, Gary Walker with a membership for 42 wow. months. Thank you, Gary. Nice. Woo Alan Mack with a two pounds as ever watch water margin in the late 70, 89D. 70, 90. Uh, no, water margin? Doesn't, no, don't ring a bell. Don't ring a bell. Sorry, man. But uh, good luck. Sorry, Alan. Up. Sorry. Uh, Matt Throw with the five pounds. I just wish Az was still with us to appreciate yeah. all these donations and gifted memberships. R.I.P. Well, his me 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 memory lives on. Matt. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> uh, Tezrata, maybe? One with the five dollars is amazing. So Kaz stream. Oh, hey, I see got what him. you did there. Got That's him. clever. Uh, for the U.S. folks, Godzilla Minus One Theatre Run ends uh, 7th of December. Check it out, everyone. Hell, Ripperverse. Hell! Oh, wow, it ends that soon? That wow. means that it's going to be here even less in Canada. We better find it. You know, right? <laughs> Ours doesn't even start to the 15th. So <laughs> okay. Uh, Wolf, uh, 1972 with the $5. I'm really pissed because I just realized that Godzilla Minus One leaves theaters on December the 7th. Yeah. This is Hollywood bullshit. Yeah. A week. Yeah. Studios own the theater space. I used to be a naive person, and I thought if you made a good movie, it would just go out in theaters. Meanwhile, Eesh. you even had Tom Cruise fighting with Barbie this year to try and get himself <laughs> screens. If Tom yes. Cruise can't get a fucking theater to show his movie, a brilliant recreate, a $15 million movie that they consider niche, no chance in hell. No. no matter how good the movie is, it doesn't matter. And it might be the streaming rights, because I don't know if you remember Fincher's Killer with Fassbender just came out. And you couldn't find it in theaters anywhere. And that's because they just wanted you to watch it on Netflix. On so Netflix, like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm definitely going to go see it when it comes out over here. And it made $34 million over the weekend. So it's, it's pretty much... Yeah made all its money back so everything from here on in is is just going to be profit nice yay godzilla uh, yay godzilla 
Uh, Guy Incognito with a 20 Canadian says, I was apprehensive when I first started watching Az, but now I'm convinced that you and the entire FNT crew are genuine. Aww. Sorry if it came off as harsh. That was not my con uh, intent. Here's 20 for 20. Because he just Aww. gifted another 20. What a guy! Membership. What a guy! Yes! Yeah, guy! Hey, guy, if, if, even if you did, even if you did, if you got one over, that's a win. Dude, if you could... So, uh, so either... Either way, uh, absolutely fine, bud. Absolutely fine. Uh, Johan Lundberg, uh, Lundberg with a hundred Swedish says, Greetings, Az and the Soskers. Uh, I have followed Hill versus Babyface for a good while now. He's funny as fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, didn't know about the Soskers sisters, but already in love. We'll definitely Aww. check up on your work. There you Thank go. You. Thank you. It's all for free on Tubi, except Vendetta's on HBO. There you go. And Guy, again, massive thank you to Guy. Uh, no. Daniel Carroll gift, uh, has become a member. So thank you, uh, Daniel. Appreciate you. Welcome, Daniel. Isaac Desormo with a $2 says, Soska's coming to Matsuri next year. Yeah, I'll go if so. Oh, sick. Where is that? Anime, anime Matsuri. It's uh, Comic Con. Anime oh my god! Oh, I would love to. Uh, we are going to be doing a lot of appearances for the Ripiverse, uh, and we are going to be signing every Yaira that you stick in front of us. Even if you stick your child in front of us, I'll just put a I'll Yaira sign it. Wow. on there. Thanks for buying Yaira. <laughs> but yeah, please hit us up online uh, for any possible places we can go, and also harass conventions and say. We want to hug the Sasuke sisters. Yeah, and I think we should go to an anime one because we already are planning anime cosplays. Jen loves Robin, and I love... <laughs> Despite Anami. what I said about Nico Robin being useless half the time, I love her. <laughs> oh. Spoken like uh, a real fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kalioth with a $10 says, Hail! Uh, you ever need a truly good story that is outrageous, check out the anime Overlord. Four seasons with a movie coming. You will geek out. It will rock you. Uh, it even out Disney's Disney. Oh, wow. Uh. And then J1 has been a bard for 14 months. J1, ah! thank you. That must be James Wan. Big job, James. Yeah, yeah, James Wan. <laughs> Obviously, you. clearly. Good luck with Aquaman. Yep. Now that does take us serendipitously to the three hour exactly mark. Uh, and like I said, I think we could keep on going. So I think that's probably a good place. Always leave them wanting more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe Always we could do it again if more. chat wants it. Mm -hmm. Well, would you would you like it again, chat? If you'd like it again, then I can I can ask the Saskas if they'd be oh. so kind. And We'd love to give it to you again, chat. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> who can turn that down yes they say yes we'd like to have it given to us again oh yay, yay! consent consent <laughs> we're down no touching without consent consent given consent given daniel daniel carroll with the five dollars with us being gone Aww. my heart breaks because i'll never hear st jesus george lionheart floyd ever again Thoughts on Dark City 1998, RIP Silverback. I couldn't possibly do that. Did we lose, did we miss your St. George Jesus Lionheart Floyd of the day? Because I caught it yesterday. I, I, I have not uh, clearly done a St. Jesus George Lionheart Floyd today. Whoa. It Is could happen a, at any time. It could, it could, it could. It may be. St. Jesus George Lionheart Floyd! Mike's done. Man, dead. Look out. And Mike. scene. <laughs> <laughs> what a I fucking douche. What a douche I am. <laughs> uh, Franco with a membership for 23 months. Yes, please. Cool stream. Much love to you all. Thank you. Mm. Thank nice, you. Frank. <laughs> Ladies. Gentlemen. What have you, uh, gentleman. Singular. <laughs> Uh, my pronouns are. Um, <laughs> what do you have coming up? Because stuff is coming up. Oh, that's right. Well, I would have to say Alpha Core number one is taking flight <laughs> from the warehouse today. It's coming oh. over. Brian Smarty is flying across America, throwing your packages on your doorstep. 
<laughs> we are very excited for Yaira coming out this winter. And you were if you thought we didn't shut up about Yaira before, oh, wow, we didn't even get started. We're going to do as many streams, appearances, everything's for Yaira. And the Alpha Core do appear in Yaira. And I can't tell you what Ooh. happens to them, but you might want to get Alpha Core so you know, uh, you know a little bit about these guys before you get into Yaira, because you're gonna want to get all the way into Yaira. Well, wow, Ripperverse. I mean, that's the cops what she's Show up, right? Yeah, when someone calls the cops, Yaira has to fuck them up. That's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> and we also have a movie that's going to be coming out next year. We are uh, Night of the Living Dead one of the greatest horror films ever made. We made a direct sequel to it uh, in conjunction with the George A. Romero Foundation, yeah. which we work with now. And uh, you should check out the George A. Romero Foundation if you are an artist that's a screenwriter or wanting to be a director because they do a lot of programs to help cultivate new talent, which we're part of. Yeah, mentorship. Yeah. And, uh, oh my gosh. Jennifer and I just got signed on to adapt a best-selling novel series into a TV series. So we finally broke into TV by being behind the camera. I don't think I'm allowed to say what it is, but we're writing mm -hmm. the pilot and we're going to be casting. So if everybody wants to pretend to be my friend now, this is time. <laughs> That's the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. time. If you're thinking, oh, I missed you. What I, are you doing? That's right. I'm, doing hiring, girl. Uh, I'm hiring. It's a really good job. So it's a consistent <laughs> job because it's a TV series that will be going on for a while. So time to really miss us. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, we are hugely inspired by Buffy. That was one of the greatest series ever made. And everyone's been saying, what's the next Buffy? I don't think there actually can be a next Buffy, but in the world of I love Buffy and I want to make something that a Buffy fan would like this is it it's gonna be it's gonna yeah. be sick you guys it's gonna be sick says the director writer <laughs> showrunner yeah and we are the new lore masters and editors at the ripiverse uh which also means we get to continue our writing duties i will say that we are doing more than you know yeah we've been doing a lot of stuff and maybe some of the stuff we've been doing is why we got the promotion oh! <laughs> you know oh. you know you know, when mm. you work in film, you work in, uh, there's a lot of free development and work that leads to nothing and you never get paid. The ripper versus weird because you do a job and then you get paid and then you do extra work and they're like, well, we better pay you extra. And then you do a good job and they're like, let's give you a new position. It's insane. It's like why I play video games because you can grind and get ahead. Unlike yeah. life, you can grind and you just fuck yourself more. <laughs> Eric is the only person I've ever worked for that gave me a contract. My Hollywood lawyer went through it and it get, went back. And then at one point, Eric was like, we should pay you more money. And I was like, what? You're not supposed to say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Where's the trick? Oh, okay. You mean, and you respect me? What? Weird. I, I feel scared. <laughs> I, I accept your terms, Eric. Yeah. I accept your terms. Um, wonderful. And then Yaira is due, probably maybe due February. I think we accidentally on the stream with the boss where we said February. I think Eric said February, so now we all are allowed to say February. But February. Yeah, but to be fair, uh, as soon as the Alpha Core campaign ends, January twentieth, Yaira, Yaira is already gearing up. We yeah. are having yeah. creative meetings uh, as soon as tomorrow. But the, <laughs> the details of the perks and the campaigns. This is going to be a big one. Yeah. And there's a lot of really, oh, man, there's stuff that, you know, if if one of the big two put any of those ideas in with their characters, it would be like just printing money. But it's nice to see such unrecognized opportunities to do a little extra for the fans and give them kind of a really unique experience that gets them like, oh, man, well, I did this one thing and then I pledged this and I got this thing that yeah. like it changed my life being able to have or do this thing. And it's, it's just nice to see a company where you ask Eric an idea and he's be like, yeah, it sounds good. And then we do it. Yeah. It's insane. It's I really honored to be a part of a company that's for the fans, actually, not just for their money, but for the fans. I mean, Eric keeps making stuff cheaper. He's yeah. losing money. What kind of a business guy is this? I mean, I know we're not supposed to read the comics, but I did and I liked it. Oh, why would you do that? That's silly. I don't understand. I'm new. 
we need to learn you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I heard something about re-education camps. I am Canadian. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, this isn't Disney. It's fine. It's <laughs> absolutely fine. Uh, but if you hit up Gina Carano, she'll talk to you about that business. Uh, wonderful. I, look, legit, can't wait. Uh, legit cannot wait, certainly after reading No Restraints Play. Um, obviously having quite a little bit of communication with you guys. Uh wow, you know, I I have I am totally all in on this and and uh, I think uh, I think the Yara campaign is gonna do something very special. I really do. Because really, really do. Community, thank you. It's cra it's crazy, but it's amazing what happens when A, uh you put something out which people want to buy, and B, you put something out based on your actual customer base. <laughs> uh it's so weird. Uh yeah. yeah it's like listening you know. and respecting the customers works. It's gonna be awful for the narrative because if Yara sees any form of success as a completely unproven IP. Where's the sexism? A, bl I a blonde chick that has superpowers and flies around that people want to read about? Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. It's just chicks writing comics. No one wants to read that. No. That's, that is... I have no idea who you were talking about there. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Uh, also, look, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be big time, big time. So it's so funny that Alpha Core is uh, starting to fulfill today. Starts today. Yeah. Campaign doesn't end till January the twentieth. Then you've got uh, Yaira coming February, and then after Yaira, there's Gooding. So oh, that Gooding is, is a, insane. Oh my god, that was a book that we read, and maybe my favorite villain in the whole series uh, is in that. I thought that was gonna be just like a. I forgot that Magic Mike Barron is like one of the best writers ever. So when I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, this is so Even great. the name of the character was so intriguing. We're like, don't, don't spoil Gooding for yourself. Just take a peek at that one character because the name is interesting. Oh, and, well, yeah. I, when uh, I first saw it, I, I thought it read as good dying. That's how, that's how, and then, and I, then I heard Eric on the street saying Gooding. And I thought like, hmm. I kind of like the good dying bit. Good, like, dying yeah. like, hmm. good dying sounds like good I don't want to spoil anything, but it's I don't know. Really good no, 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 I, don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop reading things. <laughs> don't read the comics. Stop re yeah, I don't. I can't. Why? <laughs> Nobody did. <laughs> uh, just very quickly before we go, the J one with the two pounds says amazing stream. Thank you, ladies and as. Thank you, <laughs> Joey Ellis. With a nine month membership, as we do a reaction of Robin Hood, if it gets renewed, absolutely. That I've made more money than fucking Director X has on that fucking show. Uh, Star Trek of 58 has been a member for 41 months. RIP as and hey, Saska sisters, I really want to check Aww. you girls out. Giggity. I mean, your workout. Uh, you girls are so <laughs> unre uh, so real, unlike some Hollywood. Aww, and uh, Ravnat. Yeah, it's Canadian, you know. What it's all about? What? What it's all about? Never mind. Uh, Rabnad, a uh, skull, uh, oh my god, Scubbler with a six month says Ripper Claws is coming to town. My favorite Christmas special, by the way. Merry Christmas to the Saska sisters. Love oh. your infectious sweetness. Oh, oh my goodness. Thank me. you. Thank you. Nice. Well, it's been absolutely wonderful to have you on the show. I, I, I'm pretty sure there were gazillion things we can go into without any uh, doubt whatsoever i uh, really appreciate your time uh, believe me i think i think the ripper is in very good hands uh, very Thank good hands you. uh so expect greatness because uh that's what happens when competent people get put in charge <laughs> uh chat massive thank you to everyone we've had we had consistently over two thousand over two and a half thousand for most of the streams oh, wow. uh, so wow. thank you so much for <laughs> turning out uh for the saskas uh everybody uh mods oh mods thank you so much indeed for giving up your free time really appreciate you uh everybody who super chatted membered remembered gifted memberships thank you for supporting the uh, channel and we, I guess, because we're all doing our own thing, we'll be back uh, with some more stuff very soon. Until then, you take care. Bye for now. Bye, Bye for now. Mwah.